It's the Orioles on Masson, the Cleveland Indians, and the Orioles matching up. A little rain coming down right now at Camden Yards. Second game of the four-game set. Two teams who are meeting for the first time this season, hoping to get in this game, too. Hi, everybody. Rain actually just started here at Camden Yards. There was a little bit during the batting practice. Both of the teams able to get in their pregame workouts before the tarp had to go out on the field. So we're waiting. Hopefully the showers will go by. Uh, heartbreaking loss for the Orioles. Marte with a home run in the ball game last night. Ninth inning would put it away for Cleveland. A one run win. And for only the third time this season, the Orioles lost a ball game where they had a lead going into the ninth. It was the fifth time this year that the Cleveland Indians have pulled out a win where they have trailed going into the ninth inning. For Cleveland, these are friendly confines. In fact, anywhere other than Cleveland is a friendly confine. You take a look at the numbers they have put up this season. For the Orioles at home, the largest difference in the majors in their home batting average compared to their road average. But for the Indians, they put up runs at home 4.1, but 5.6 on the road. They have the largest difference in the major leagues in runs scored on the road. So, Buck Martinez, this is the ballpark. Both are happy to play it. Yeah, I don't want too many pitchers reading that graphic before the game starts, but it really looks like the Cleveland Indians, with their younger lineup now, a little more athletic, haven't really become acclimated to the home ballpark just yet. And I think the big thing about them is they got a pretty balanced lineup. Last night it was the eighth and ninth hitter in the lineup that did the damage, first Laporta and then Marte, as you mentioned. So I think this young team plays very well. The Orioles, on the other hand, love hitting in this ballpark. It's a good background. There's a lot of space out there, and I just think they're very comfortable and really see the ball well here in this park. All right, let's turn to the other side of it. The guys who have to try and shut all that down. How about pitching tonight? Well, the pitching is interesting, and Jason Burkett goes to the mound tonight, coming off a real good start last time out against the White Sox. The one thing that Burkin did, as you look at his outing, five and two-thirds of two earned run pitching, is he used his two-seam fastball very well. It led to two double plays in the ball game and nine ground ball outs overall, so I think he found a new weapon that he likes, and it's a little bit different look for him as he's been trying to use a four-seam fastball up in the zone. Now that two-seamer gives him something where he can consistently pitch down in the zone. And the man he will be pitching to is certainly moving along. Uh, the major league experience necessary in order to grow in the game is showing up for Matt Wieters. Well, it sure is, and of course, last week we saw this Joe Maurer in Milwaukee in Minnesota, and now Matt last night going the opposite way. And the one thing about this that I really like as a young hitter, he doesn't think about pulling the ball and hit it out of the ballpark. We have seen him hit opposite field home runs as a left-handed hitter and as a right-handed hitter. And we talk about these fine two young catchers. Obviously, Maurer already an all-star, two-time batting champ, but this is where they are, 63 games into their careers, where Matt Wieters is compared to Joe Maurer. Pretty similar numbers, and now, of course, we know that the home run power has really come on for Joe Maurer this season. And Matt will be in the lineup tonight and a couple of teams, but who really are kind of in the uh, same uh, cooking pot. They're both trying to develop their ball club for future years. Yeah, Gary, and I think the real interesting thing, and I think it's very important for the Orioles, is to start winning some of these games. You don't want to go into the offseason wondering what kind of club you're going to have next year. There are some things that have to be answered. Some of these younger pitchers have to start winning games and pitching a little deeper into their outings. You can't just be settled with a six-inning outing and say, well, I did my job. You have to stay out there, learn how to win out there, and this team collectively as a unit needs to start winning some games. All right, we're going to have a delayed start with the rain coming down, but keep your dauber up out there because we should be able to get this one in when we come back game two we'll come back set the stage
game tonight. Not in the lineup for the Orioles. Adam Jones, he continues out with a bad back. Yeah, young guy that had a back problem that creep up on him in Chicago last Sunday. Took an awkward swing against Mark Burley. Felt something in his back. He was immediately taken out of the game. They thought maybe just a cramp, maybe something he would be out for a day or so, but now it's missed five games. The thing about Adam is he was having such a phenomenal season. 41 multi-hit games, third on the Orioles ball club. 317 with runners in scoring position, the second on the team. And the interesting thing about that is that Adam is really starting to understand what he is as a player and how he can really contribute to this offense. He's hit in several different spots in the order and responded very well no matter where Dave Tremley puts him. Talk about responding. The Orioles going through all of those shortstop last season, trying to find someone who could anchor that position, knowing how important it is, found that anchor. And I think it's fair to say as Torres is having uh, even a better season than they'd hoped for. I think you're right, Gary. When you look at the stability of shortstop, Cesar Sturz had a terrific series in Minnesota playing on the artificial surface, and he's gotten some key hits. The thing about Caesar is he's going to hit 265, 270, somewhere around there. But this season, I think defensively, he has really proven to this young pitching staff how important a good shortstop is. Nine RBIs in August. He's had a good productive month. And the thing about it is when you have good young pitchers on your staff, you want them to understand the value of contact. And it's a lot easier when you have a shortstop like Caesar Asturias that can really catch him. And he certainly has done that. And he is in the lineup, and uh, they are hopeful this game is going to get underway at 8 o'clock, so some uh, 26, 27 minutes. They'll get the field ready to go. We will be back for game two, delayed by rain. Orioles Indians coming up 8 o'clock to start.
at southwest.com. And it has stopped raining here at Camden Yards. 74 degrees, cloudy skies, virtually no breeze as we get set to go in our rain delayed ball game. Game two against the Indians. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Cleveland, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Indians will have Sizemore, Cabrera, and Chu, Peralta, Hafter, and Valbuena, Laporta, Marte, and Torregas. Sounds like one of my little league teams in the Dominican Republic there. <laughs> Grady Sizemore, three for five, two RBIs last night. PNC scouting report for Jason Burke, and he throws all four pitches. He's used his two-seam fastball very effectively last time out against the White Sox, and he needs to work down in the zone. I don't think there's any mystery to that. His movement and the ability to get ground balls will be when he's down in the bottom of that strike zone. That was a very good formula for him against the White Sox. He threw very well into the sixth inning and had two double plays because of the sink on his fastball. 18th start of the season for Burke and just three wins. All the numbers are something he would like to improve upon here as he winds down his first major league season and works hard all the time in between trying to refine his pitches and make sure his location is as sharp as it can be. And let the defense work behind him, which uh, has worked pretty well. Well, it sure has, Gary. Left to right in the outfield, it's Rymo, P.A., and Marquez. Adam Jones still dealing with that back issue. More and his stirrups have been great the last week or so on the left side. Robertson, Scott on the right side, and Matt Weavers is behind the plate. And with that, after the rain delay, we are ready to go. Grady Sizemore led it off with a home run. In the ball game last night, Sizemore against Birkin, and he will take the pitch for a strike. Tim Cheetah has the plate tonight. Sizemore with that big bat in the leadoff spot, always the threat. 18 home runs, 62 RBIs, a threat to put one out, especially early in a ball game where he'll sit on a fastball while a pitcher's getting ready to break into the game. Yeah, man, he has become a pretty good power hitter. His average is off this year. He's been dealing with an elbow problem all year long. It's really robbed him of that freedom to swing. But second half here, it's been a little bit better for him. Sizemore with a one ball, one strike count. Perkins delivery to him will be fouled away. And the Oriole right-hander goes up one and two. Well, we're going to watch all night long as Birkin gets ahead and then just see how they try to resolve the at-bats. Last night, David Hernandez was ahead all night, oftentimes 0-2. And then the Indian hitters are very patient and work their way back into the count. Hernandez left the game with a chance to win. Way away. Leaders reaching up to haul that one in. And the count will go to two ball and two strikes. Yeah, it looked like that slider just slipped right out of his hands. And he's feeling the baseball just to suggest maybe just felt some moisture on his hand, but he's all set and ready to go again. Two and two now. Field in great shape, especially infield, covered before any rain got onto it. Towards second base, Brian Roberts back. He's up with it. Makes the play, gets the outside. more is out of there. One down. Well, we told you that Jason Burkett throws four pitches, and this is a two-seam fastball. Kind of unusual because it's across the seams. Most of the time, two seamers are thrown with the seam. This is the four-seam fastball, a little more velocity, much straighter trajectory. Throws a curveball with the real big emphasis on that middle finger along the long seam. The slider is thrown with a much tighter spin, a little more velocity and not as big a break. And this is his changeup thrown with that same two-seam grip. Here is Cabrera batting second, who had an 0 for 3 in the opener to the ball game last night. Not easy to keep him off base. He's having a career year in just about every offensive category. Tenth in average as a result of the numbers he's put up since the All-Star break. Tenth leading average in the American League. Cabrera's hit safely in 17 of the last 20 at a 366 clip. 1-1 one, one delivery to him, and that's on the outside corner for a strike one and two. Well, Gary, one thing I love about Cabrera is the way he chokes up on the bat handle. That gives him tremendous bat control. He's not a power hitter. He doesn't have to be down on the end of the knob. He's up about three inches off that bat handle. Aren't many who do that anymore. 1-2 delivery to him. Great pitch down and in. Fouled off. The old Nelly Fox approach. Nelly had more bat under his hand than he did on top when he hit. Of course, the bat had the same size at both ends, so yeah, it didn't matter yeah. which end he hit Just with. Like one straight barrel. It didn't have a taper to the handle whatsoever. See, nothing even close to that kind of a bat in Major League Baseball anymore, that big handled bat. 
Here's the one-two delivery to Cabrera, and he'll foul it away. Fox wasn't trying to hit home runs. He was trying to just poke the ball, and he, when he got jammed, he could muscle a pitch over the infield. Hitters today want that slender handle that they can whip the bat through the strike zone. Yeah, and they're the product of the aluminum bat era, so they have very light bats, and they want to have bat speed, generate the bat speed. Here's the one-two delivery by Burke, and that'll be in the air to left center field, and that's going to be a gapper. Over to get it, Felix P.A. It'll roll up against the wall. Cabrera will go into second base, and he's got a double as he punched that one against the Orioles' defense that time for his 33rd two-bagger. And you see, 33 doubles, you don't have to have that bat handle down on the end and run that bottom hand over the knob. He drives this ball, splits the outfielders in the power alley to the opposite field. A couple of hops up against the wall. But he takes his, that fastball away and drives it away from Felix P.A. Just too much of the plate and it was up a bit higher than the two seam fastballs he had thrown earlier. And that look brought to you by Northrop Grumman the information systems powerhouse. Sin Su Chu with a runner on at second base. He'll go after the first pitch and fouls it back. If you have not seen Chu look at his numbers and he plays up to them. He is truly a five tool player. He can run, hit for average, hit for power, good defender, and throws very well. 0 1 count, batting third in the order, and a big three for four in the ball game last night for Chu. He too has had a, a red hot bat. Weeder's going to go out and have a word with Birkin. Highest batting average among right fielders, Ichiro at 360, Chu 315, and there's Nick Markakis at 303. Have to have the offensive players, and when they're all right fielders and good outfit, it's pretty impressive. That is quite the list right there. Oh, one delivery grounded foul outside of first base. A little bit off that pitch, and the count will go to all and two on Chu. Chu came from Seattle. He came up in the Mariners system, and they traded him here. Cabrera also from Seattle at second base, and Valbuena from Seattle. Three if, major league players. If Seattle had all of the players on both these rosters back in Seattle, <laughs> we wouldn't be talking about the Angels winning the division. Exactly. Slide out and missed. He didn't want to, but he chased. Chu is retired. A strikeout for Birkin. Two down. Well, there's a time to elevate a fastball, and this is a perfect time. 0 and 2 again. You can see tentative swing. Tried to check his swing, but once he got it going. I love the fact that you're aggressive 0 and 2. We've talked about it a lot lately how. Hitters are most vulnerable when they're 0 2 and don't show them a lot of pitches. And I don't like that phrase waste pitch. I don't think you waste anything. Mm -hmm. Johnny Peralta now with a runner at second base and two down. That'll miss away for a ball. Peralta did not start in the ball game last night. Ended up with an 0 for 1. See the numbers he has put up on the season 259 with runners in scoring position for Johnny Peralta. Swung out a miss. Down and away to the third baseman, and the count will go to one and one. Birkins had some pretty good movement on the breaking balls that he's thrown here in this first inning. Well, he has been boosted by his last outing against the White Sox. Some very good veteran hitters in that lineup, and he pitched very well. Got it. And he is safe, but not by much. They were letting him wander out there, and Cabrera had nobody remotely close to the bag for two pitches, and then Brian Roberts charging in. Almost got him. He sure did, and he called for the ball with that bare hand. And had he put his knee down, he could have blocked the base runner off the base. But you can see the hand sneaks underneath the tag. Good call, Bob Davidson, second base umpire. Here's the one-one delivery on the way, and that will miss just inside. A two-ball, one-strike count on Peralta. Birkin trying to get out of the inning without damage here. First inning has been a troublesome one for him this year. He surrendered 18. First inning runs more than any other inning. Here's the 2 1 delivery. And that one just misses. He falls behind here. Three balls and one strike on Peralta. Peralta's uh, had his problems at the plate of late. Only a couple of hits and 12 at bats on this road trip. Cleveland's in the midst of a 10 game road trip. They've won three and lost one so far, starting in Kansas City. 3-1 delivery on the way, and that is a base hit into left field. 
With the runner going, Cabrera will score easily. The bat ended up flying off the backstop brick wall, but the ball ended up falling in for a single and a one nothing lead. Uh, you make a good pitch and you break a bat and you hope that it's going to be at somebody, but this one goes over the drawn and infield. I mean, that's right down around the label. The bat shatters in his hands. And then a little flare as it's just over the shortstop's head and Cabrera running with two outs scores easily. Another first inning run for the Indians. Peralta, two out RBI. That's 68 on the year for Peralta. Now Travis Hafner will stand in with a runner on at first base and two down. Hafner, the designated hitter. And the pitch is taken for a strike. He had an 0 for 4 in the opener last night. 273 with the 13 home runs for Travis Hafner. He's had problems with the right shoulder this year that's bothered him, put him on the DL, required some minor league rehab time. Oh, one delivery to him. Not going to go after it. Check at third, did not go around. Jeff Nelson down there on the count, 1 and 1. Birkin with a strikeout, a double and a single against him. He get Hafter and get the inning. Outfield deep, pretty much straight away. 1 1 delivery to him. That's the inside part of the plate and foul, one and two. This Cleveland team has played some good baseball after they made some deals that got rid of some big names. Since the All Star break, 22 wins, 16 losses. They've won 15 of their last 25 under Eric Wedge. Only the Cardinals, Yankees, have better records since that July date. One two delivery is swung on and missed, and Birkin will get his second strikeout. The Indians, though, will get a run on a couple of hits. One nothing lead. Orioles lineup when we come back. And Scott Wieters, Wigginton, and his tourist, Melvin Moore, had a big night last night, five for his last eight. PNC Scott, a report for the Indians, big right hander, Fausto Carmona. Fastball slider to change up. Left handed hitters have really get him a, given him a problem. They're hitting 95 points higher than left handers. And he hasn't had the same sinking fastball that led him to so many ground ball outs this year. Only two ground balls for every fly ball this year. In the past, he's been as high as four to one. Fausto Camona remaking his own image this season. And a strike taken by Brian Roberts. Brian did not start in the ball game last night. Came in, had an 0 for 1. He's 4 for 17 off Carmona. And Carmona's pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Started in the majors, went down to the minors, came back up. They say a different pitcher. The numbers certainly say that, even though the record's one and two. ERA down by about five runs. 
opponent batting average way down. Roberts will take the pitch. It is in there for a strike one and two. Yeah, and before the demotion, he gave up nine home runs, and since he's been back, just one. So that gives you an idea. He's pitching in a much better part of the strike zone. Brian Roberts on a one two. Swings and misses. Had some sink on that one. One away. Mark Carmona in 2007 was 19 and 8, and then he just lost his sinking fastball. 88 miles an hour. It took a little off of it, got more dramatic movement, split the middle of the plate, but sunk out of the reach of Brian Roberts. Carmona was 0 1 against the Orioles last year. He has two wins and three losses against the Orioles' lifetime. Felix PA in the number two spot. Felix has got a three game hit streak going. He continued it last night as he had a two for five in the ball game, getting a chance to play position he first played in the minors, center field. With Adam Jones out. 0 1 delivery looped off the end of the bat for an 0 2 count. Well, PA has really done a nice job working with the hitting instructor Terry Crowley. As far as being more selective, laying off the borderline pitches, not chasing balls in the dirt, and as a result, his average has crept up. 0 2 delivery. Got him. The inside corner strikes, so Carmona starts out with a couple of quick K's. 0 and 2 coming right at you. This is a lot of arms and legs and great extension through the delivery. Gets that fastball to come back over the inside corner. Watch the late movement on this fastball right over the corner. He had eight strikeouts in his last start against Seattle in a six to one win. He's only won three games on the season. One of them came back in April. One of them came in May. And then the win in his last start against Seattle. In between there, the minor leagues we talked about. Slider is going to miss. Outside Nolan Rimel batting third. Nolan's got a three game hit streak. He had a one for four in the ball game last night to keep it alive. 14 consecutive games he has reached base a career high for him. And the pitch will be taken outside off speed pitch and a 3 0 count. Looks like some kind of a slurve. Carmona trying to have a quick inning here. Rymold trying to extend him a little bit. 3-0 delivery. Digging for a strike three and one. That we have seen different velocities as he will throttle back on his fastball, get a little more movement on it, and then he will throw a four seamer with a much higher velocity. 3-1. Did he go? Yes, he did. The home plate umpire makes the call, and Carmona. Takes the count to three and two. Nolan Reimold was headed down to first base. I came with a change of that time, and it had real dramatic movement late. Three, two, two down, bases empty. Reimold on a chopper down to third. Going to be a tough play. Peralta's got it. Guns it. Not going to get. Oh, he got him. Fine play by Peralta. Who had to make the catch and the throw in one motion? Dave Tremblay is coming out to argue it to the naked eye, of which I have two. It looked like he was safe. Dave Tremblay really going at Bob Davidson. Davidson almost mimicking Tremblay with the arms going up in the air there. Let's take a look. Bang, bang at first base, and Rymold always hustling for Arthur's throw. Look like he was safe.
Bucks in the Maryland Lottery for every Oriole home run hit tonight. You can enter by logging in at MassingSports.com. Luis Valbuena. Valbuena with a one for four in the ball game last night goes down the line and left, and that is going to be a base hit into the corner. Rymel will chase. And a leadoff double, third hit of the ball game off Birkin by the Indians, and another runner down to second base. Yeah, we talked about Birkin locating his pitches down, and watch how high this pitch is. It's just up out over the plate, and he serves it down the left field line. Didn't exert an awful lot of energy as he did that, just kind of slapped it the other way, and it went all the way into the corner. So the Indians' bats coming out alive in this one. Leadoff man on, Laporta. Matt Laporte has got an eight game hit streak coming into this ball game. Laporta, one of those in this lineup, trying to earn the right to be a regular next season. And he will take it for a strike. He has gone 10 for 30 with a home run and five RBIs during the eight game streak. Yeah, the Indians want him to play every day because he's the guy that they got for CC Sabathia last year in that trade deadline deal with the Brewers. Oh, one delivery. A highly touted player out of Port Charlotte, Florida, 24 years old. Only two seasons in the minors prior to this year. Spent most of the time in the minors this season, and now the Indians getting a look. Here's the 1 1 delivery to him. Birkins pitches down low and a two ball, one strike count. Runner is second, and nobody out. Burkett here at home, one and six. ERA of 5.48 here at Camden Yards. First time he's pitched against the Indians. And that pitch is going to miss. It doesn't look like those pitches are missing by much, but they are missing. Yeah, they are missing, and he's in a much better spot now. And when he's missing, he's missing down. So that's a step in the right direction. He just has to adjust his sights a bit. Short lead at second base as Torres holding the runner. 3 1 delivery on the way. That'll be foul back 3 and 2. Now, Laporta had the big hit with two outs last night to keep the top of the ninth alive. He was hitting in the eighth spot, got a 3 2 fastball from Jim Johnson, hit a ground ball up the middle, and then that set the table for Andy Marte's two run home run. 3 and 2. As Torres trying to make sure that second jump isn't too big out there. For Valbuena. Here's the 3 2 delivery on the way. Grounded to his Torres. The runner will move up as Torres bobbled, but has time to get the out. One down. That'll bring up the hero from last night, Marte. Andy Marte facing Jim Johnson gets a fastball, then extends through the zone. A two run fastball, two run home run with two outs, and leading after eight innings. They Orioles have been great. 44 and 3 now. What about the Royals? They haven't lost a game leading after eight. Of course, they haven't had a lead many times, 41. <laughs> but nevertheless, infield is drawn in. And a ball in the air to center field. PA a 360 on Marty's fly ball. Marte's going to get an RBI. Valbuena will score, and that's how you manufacture a run. A double, a ground ball to move him up. And a sack fly to get him in and a 2 nothing lead for the Indians. And very difficult when you give up a double to start the inning to keep them from scoring. And they actually perfectly as the Porter moved into third and then Andy Marte drove him in. So well, Marte gets it done. So in his last two at bats against the Orioles, he's had three RBIs. Marte with the dozen runs batted in on the season. He has a Played in a whole lot of ball games. Keeps going like this. He will. 21st game for him. Two down now. Base is empty. Wyatt Torregas out of Fairfax County, Virginia. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. He's getting a chance behind the plate. Indians taking a long look at catchers. Well, you do that season. when you trade Victor Martinez away. Yep. Try to see what you're going to have in the future and who's going to take the majority of the workload. I guess we'll take the pitch outside. Eric Wedge, he's got a new deal, so he knows he's going to be there, so the players know. 
if they are showing their stuff in front of the guy who's going to make some decisions next year about their future and how much they play. 2 1 delivery, and that ball is hit in the air to left center field. It's in the yard. Rymo, PA, PA wants it, and he's got it. But a run in after the leadoff double by Valbueno, and the Indians take an early 2 0 lead. bounce back after making mistakes and last night they got some more information about Jim Johnson he blew the save but afterwards he was standing at his locker accountable to the media he told reporters hey I made a mistake and it really stings because these guys battled but I was the one that made a mistake I'm gonna take my lumps and move on right after that he went into manager Dave Tremblay's office and said skip tomorrow if we're in a safe situation I want to be the one that has the ball and that's the exact mental makeup that Dave Tremblay is looking for from his young closer now, when I spoke to Jim today about it, he said, yeah, I went home and I went over those pitches in my head, but I'm not going to beat myself up because once I do that, I dig myself into a hole, and then that makes it tougher to come out the next day and help the team, and that's what I'm here to do. So he made the mistake, and he's moving on, and that's what the Orioles want to see. Gary? And boy, I am if there's any position where that has to happen, it's with a closer in the buck. Boy, it sure is. You have to have short memory, and they probably appreciate the fact that Johnson was right there, said, you know what, I'm ready to go. Don't worry about me. I'll come back and be aggressive. And that's the kind of mindset you have to have. In, interesting. Johnson last year did not give up a home run in 68 and two-thirds innings. He has given up seven in 59 and two-thirds innings this year. That'll be fouled off by Nick Marcakis. Yeah, it's quite a turnaround, obviously, and it's, it's kind of hard to fathom why that would be because he still has great movement on his fastball. He can pitch inside with the best of he has the ability to throw strikes inside and last night during his at bat Matt Laporta after the game would say that's the best fastball he's seen so far in the big leagues for velocity and movement. Mark Agus goes to short they were playing him the other way Cabrera knocks it down but will not have a play. Again hitting against the defense they were playing him to go up the middle and Cabrera had moved way over and the ball forced him back towards shortstop. Yeah you can see where he's lined up expecting Mark Agus to move and he didn't really track that ball very well. He's late moving. Watch his reaction. He actually went to his left with his body and didn't go to his right. So he was expecting Marquecas to hit it to the pull side of the diamond, and he didn't really react to the flight of the ball very well. It's really interesting to see that. That's that's that cheating we talked about. He was playing the way they had lined him up, and he moved towards second base before the ball was even thrown. So he was off balance trying to get back the other way. It will be a single. So Nick Marquegas is on with a base hit. Melvin Mora. Melvin has a three game hit streak. Melvin had a three for four in the ball game last night. The Orioles down early by a score of two nothing. Trying to get him back. And that sweeping pitch is down low for a ball to an O. The O's bats have continued to pound him out. They've been picking up hits here in ball games, especially at home. And they're 
they're going to need him against Carmona if he can pitch in this game the way he has over his last few starts since being recalled from the minors. Alvin Miller takes it in the air to center field. That will back up Sizemore. Marquegas will tag. Nick will head. And the throw is too strong. He's got to go back. Good arm of Sizemore. And Melvin Moore, the fly ball out, went away. Moore gave it a ride, but to the deepest part of the ballpark. Luke Scott comes in with a four game hit streak. Luke had a one for four in the ball game last night. Getting the start at first base. Cleveland rotates the infield. Putting the shift on here. And I mean putting the shift on. And he hits into it. And he's got a base hit. Arikagas had a stop to make sure he didn't get hit by the ball. That'll be a hard single by Scott. Two on one down. Well, even against the shift, Luke hits it hard enough to get it past Van Wena into right field. The second baseman shifted over. He can't make a play on it. Marte didn't bounce off the bag very quickly, and that ball was right between the first baseman and the second baseman. So the Orioles get two on with only one away. And Matt Wieters will stand in. Matt had a one for four in the ball game last night. He continues to up his offensive numbers in about every category, batting at 263. This is the one he wants to get up with runners in scoring position. Only 203 inside for a ball. Last night in the seventh inning against Jess Todd, he goes opposite field. With the home run, it was a fastball away, and that has been a pretty familiar pattern for Matt Wieters. All of his home runs have gone to the opposite field. Matt also with a four game hit streak, 313 during the streak. And the fastball by Carmona is taken down low for a ball. Wieters gets ahead on the count 2 0. 25 year old right hander. When he works out of the stretch, Opposition hitting 301, 50 points higher than when he's working out of the windup. And we talked about his problems against left handed hitters, and so far it's playing out. Two hits in this inning, both left handers. 2 0 delivery on the way. 315 for the lefties, 224 for the right handers. I mean, that is a, that's an enormous difference. And nine of the ten home runs, as Buck talked about, have been surrendered, have come by left-handers. Yeah, and the problem for him is he doesn't have that real good cut breaking ball that can come into left-handers to keep them honest. He needs to have a ball going into him because he's got the one that goes away, but now everybody's focused on the one that's away. Nothing to keep the hitters off that sinking fastball away. 3-0 will be taken. Marquegas, the lead runner, Scott on at first. Weeders has had a couple of home runs in the month of August. RBI chances right there. 235, his average on the month, and a much better season at home than on the road. 3 1 delivery. Weeders takes that left center field, got all of it way back near the wall, and that's going to take a hop. One run is in. Scott got a great jump. He'll be held at third. It'll be a double and an RBI. For Matt Wieters at a two to one ball game. Well, there's that opposite field power we were talking about and it comes through in the first. Opportunity for the Orioles here in the second. Great extension not a bad pitch down and away but it was a hitter count. He had to count in his favor. He had seen some fastballs away and he drills it right off the 364 side and left. By the time they get it back in, Luke Scott is right at third base, and Waiters picks up one RBI, and he has the Orioles in a great situation here. Second and third, one down. 23 RBIs for Matt Waiters in the 64 games played in. Ty Wigginton with two in scoring position and only one out. Wigginton, the designated hitter, is batting eighth. That's the slider for a strike. 
Ground ball gets you an RBI here. You hit it up the middle, stay in a big part of the diamond. They're going to be able to score. Luke Scott, the infield is playing back, even at third base. You see how deep Johnny Peralta is at third as well. Oh, one count. Wigginton played last night, had a one for three. Scott at third, Weeders at second. And the 0 1 down to third base. Runner not going. Peralta is going to make the throw and get the out. And the decision made not to run on contact cost the Orioles a run. And Juan Samuel is kind of like in between here with Luke Scott discussing the play. You can see Luke never broke toward home on contact, and even after the bottle, Peralta recovers in time to throw out Wigginton. That's a run the Orioles should have had because Peralta was not going to come to the plate on that. Yeah, look how shallow he is now. He's even with the bat. Yeah. And his Torres is going to deliver a base hit. Coming around his weeders. Nope, he's going to be sent back. Would have been a collision on that one. So the Orioles have tied it up as Torres delivers the RBI single. Tenth RBI of the month for Cesar Astores, 25th of the season. Boy, that's a big two out base hit. First pitch swinging, got it up around the letters, and he hooks it into right. Luke Scott jogs in and right behind him. Weeders had a full head of steam coming around the base, but Juan Samuel stops him. Chu throws the ball very well. He has 10 assists from right field, and he was right on the money. His Torres is now. Hitting over 335 with runners in scoring position at two outs. He is one of the best two out RBI people that the Orioles have. And again, we talked about it during the rain delay the importance of his tourists both in the field and at the plate this year for the Orioles. Yeah, there's nothing like a two out hit to demoralize the opposition, and Caesar Asturias didn't waste any time, got a base hit. Certainly picks up his teammates and delivers and puts Carmona in another mess. First and third, two down, leadoff batter Brian Roberts, strikeout victim, his first time up. This has been a busy inning for Juan Samuel, the third base coach. He's had to make some calls down there. Found away, and I think both correctly so. Luke Scott did not have enough speed to make it in on the play before, and that time if Samuel sends Weeders. At best, there was going to be a collision at the plate because the throw came all the way in right on the third baseline. Yeah, part of the information you want as a third base coach is the speed of your runners, the arm strength of the outfield, and how well they throw charging in. That ball was hit right at the right fielder on line with Chu, so he was coming directly toward the plate. And he's got a very strong arm. He was a pitcher as an amateur, and there was some thoughts that he would go to the mound, much like Nick Markakis. Orioles, as a result, don't have an out recorded at the plate and get two runs. 0 1 count. Foul back, Brian Roberts with a big cut. Brian, since the All Star break, hitting 325, he comes into this ball game second in runs, first in doubles. In the league, a position he has held for much of the season. Has runners at first and third. And Roberts down to first. Somebody's got to cover. First baseman will get back. Marte to get the out. El Bueno making the throw. The Orioles, though, get a couple of runs. Four hits. Two are left on. Game tied at two.
PNC leading the way. Buck Martinez, Amber Theo Harris, Gary Thorne, great to have you with us. A 2 2 ball game. Cleveland won the opener last night. Ninth inning, home run, won it by one. Orioles have been involved in uh, a lot of one run ball games on the season. They are 14 and 19 in one run games. And of late, those uh, one run games have continued to pile up. Four out of the last five that the Orioles have played have been decided by just a run. First batter of the game last night, Grady Sizemore gets a two strike changeup from David Hernandez and hits it the opposite way. That was his 18th home run of the season. The 0 1 delivery to him hits him. So Sizemore is on. That is the sixth hit batter by Birkin this year in his 17 starts. And the leadoff fan on for the second of three innings. Took that one down around the foot and obviously didn't bother him very much. Here is Cabrera. He doubled and scored. Switch hitter for the Indians. Hitting 306 right handed, 315 left, throw over, made it close. Cabrera's got five home runs, all five hit left handed. And Birkin will have to wait. Cabrera's got a lifetime batting average of 419 against the Orioles. Despite the fact he had gone hitless in the last two, but he ended that with a double his first time up in this ball game. So 419 against the O's in his career. Highest average with runners on this season. 344. Pretty good company. Joe Maurer leads the way. 381. He had an RBI single in tonight's game as they jumped out on top of Texas. Battle of wild card teams. 0 1 count. That ball's laced into right field for a base hit. Marquegas up with it. Will hold the runner Sizemore at second base. And there are two on, and Birkin not fooling many here. Each team now with four hits in the ballgame. And again, it's just a matter of location. That ball was just up a bit, and this time Cabrera pulled the ball. Great bat control, as we mentioned. He got a ball away from him, went opposite way for the double in his first hit bat, and scored the first run of the ballgame. Now two on, and nobody out. Tie ball game, and here's Chu, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Pitch is going to be taken down low for a ball. One oh count size more with outstanding speed and second Cabrera better than average speed at first. Here's the one oh pitch that ball towards the middle Brian Roberts great knockdown there's one is Torres just missed. Fine combination of Roberts and his Torres to get the force out. Well, the ball just hung up there in the air and kind of just floated in front of his doors. That's why he has to wait for it. You can see he takes it barehanded, throws off stride, and it's still almost in time to get Chu. Well, what an effort by Brian Roberts as he stays down on the ground, flips it with the backhand. It just floats to his doors, and he still has enough on the ball to make it close at first. Now first and third and one away. Those two have done some outstanding work. Patrolling the middle of the infield. Johnny Peralta had a single and an RBI his first time up. That was close. Yeah, Chu got his feet all tangled up. Looked like he was going to step on the bag and then he reached for it with his hand and it almost allowed Birkin to pick him off. Look how he's going to dive back and walk back. Now he's half between sliding and standing up. One down. Peralta takes the pitch outside for a ball. Gary, we had talked about the importance of Caesar Asturias on this team. Same can be said for Brian Roberts at second. But when you pitch and you see that type of defense behind you, you've got a lot of confidence that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to strike everybody out. Put it in play, keep it on the ground, and give yourself a chance to get a double play. 1 0 delivery, a big cut and a miss. One ball, one strike count on Peralta. 
for Peralta here in August 289 with one home run. Incredibly the month of August is now. Whooshing out the door. One ball one strike out. Runners off first and third and that will be taken down low for a ball and the count will go to two and one. He just made all the kids watching wince as you reminded them to school it's not that far away. <laughs> Monday some are already back in Monday some of the schools start around. Seems as though it gets earlier every year. Two ball one strike out. And that will be fouled off. It's the same thing with the like ball players every year getting younger. Do you, you notice that. <laughs> How do they do that. <laughs> Don't know but I haven't found the secret. Two ball two strike out Peralta. They could care less. <laughs> yeah, no matter what, it's Friday night. <laughs> Not going to school tomorrow anyway. That's right, with the buds at the ballpark. Peralta waiting on the 2 2. Runners off first and third. Runner going. The Weeders will throw through and not in time. Roberts over to take it. The runner stays at third base. And Chu will get a stolen base. I don't think Matt had a real good grip on this ball. Watch the hesitation. You could see a little hesitation that cost it. Throw his arm line, but just late. Brian's got great position right there. There's the slide, the contact with the bag before Roberts can tag Chu. But I don't think Matt had a real good grip when he went into the glove to get that baseball, and that's why he had that momentary hesitation. 18 out of 20 in stolen bases for Chu. Now two in scoring position one down and a three ball two strike count on Peralta. Well, big chance for the Indians here against Birkin. Orioles will stay back and surrender the run. On a ground ball to get the out. Three two delivery. Got him. Birkin gets a big strikeout arguing about it is Peralta. Boy, this is a good pitch. This is in the inside front door breaking ball. Not meant to be. But you see the target was outside and he misses all the way across the plate. But it's effective as Tim Sheeta didn't go so much with the target, called the strike zone, and Peralta is down on strikes. The Birkin with a chance to get out of this now as Travis Hafner stands in, the designated hitter. After a strikeout victim, his first time up, two down and two on. And he'll take the pitch high and away. Hafner's had good numbers here at Camden Yards. He's a 319 career average here in this ballpark, including three home runs and 13 RBIs. He's had more at bats here, 72, than any other member of the Indians. 1 0 delivery to him. Breaking ball will miss. And a 2 0 count on Hafner with Valbueno waiting on deck. Would you even think about working around Travis Hafner? Yeah, you, you don't want to give in to him for sure with a base open. You just want to make sure that you make good pitches and don't leave anything over the heart of the plate. 2 0 count. Hafner will take it up high, and it sure looks like Birkin. Doesn't want anything to do with Travis Hamner. Yeah, you have to pick your battles, and this isn't one you want to have right now. Early in the ball game with two outs. Weeders looked over as though they might want the intentional pass here, and they do. Yeah. Once you fall behind three and zero, I think Matt had a feeling that they trembly might want to put it on Hamner and pitch to Valbuena. So the bases are loaded. Valbuena had a double and score to run his first time up. Will come to the plate. Two down. Well, the first time Valbuena was up, he took a ball outside and just kind of stiff armed it down the left field line. I think after the inning, Rick Cranitz had a talk with Weeders and Birkin about how to pitch to this guy. Just challenge him to use his hands a little more effectively and work the inner part of the plate as opposed to letting him slap it out over the plate. Sizemore, Chu, and Habner, the base runners. That is going to miss for a ball. This is the first hit for Valbuena and watch how he just takes that ball away and slaps it to the opposite field. Pretty good coverage away. 1 0 count on him. Well, that just misses and the count goes to 2 and 0 again these pitches by Birkin. They are just off the mark. 
but they are. And the Cleveland hitters showing great patience here, not going after these close pitches. Ball game tied at two, bases loaded. Here's the 2 0 delivery on the way. Abuena takes this one to left field, Rymold. He's got it, and Birkin works his way out of it. No runs on a hit. The Indians will leave the bases loaded and leave the score tied at two. Eight. 1980 most hits in a game 26 86 most losses in a day two. Don Ossie at Oakland and an 86 most steals in a game seven for the club at Oakland. So what's going to happen today? Something special. It's a towering pop up to shallow center field. Boy that had some hang time on it. Sizemore plenty of time to get in underneath it and P.A. is retired one away. Well, you can see how Cabrera is calling for it, and then the outfielder has priority. He's got the right away. It's a much easier play for him coming in on it than it is for the infielder going back. Carmona gets the first out. Nolan Reimold grounded out. And we'll take the pitch down low for a ball. Great Among battle. the rookies, huh? Yeah, great battle for rookie of the year. Gordon Beckham has kind of come back to the pack, and Rymel was second in batting average. Chris Getz, Elvis Andrews, and Luis Valbuena. Top five hitters in the rookie category. 2 0 delivery. Nolan's got a real shot at garnering some votes. It's tougher to do. On ball clubs that are not winning to gain the attention, but I mean his average has been up there virtually all of the season, and it's not just the average. He's been among the leaders in the rookies and home runs and RBIs, and he's going to get serious consideration. Nolan swung on and missed. He has the most home runs for rookies with 12. He is second behind Beckham in RBIs with 39. Beckham has 47 starting the day. And he and Beckham are like one, two, or three in almost every offensive category. I think the real contenders that he's going to have to deal with are going to come from pitchers. Yeah. Jeff Neiman has 12 wins. He's a rookie. Ricky Romero has 11 for the Blue Jays. And Rick Porcello of the Tigers has 10. That's a lot of wins. Yeah. He will draw the walk here. So Reimold is on with a one out free pass. Carmona's first walk. On Monday, the Yankees come to town to begin a three-game series. Final chapter in the classic rivalry. Great seats still available. On Tuesday, don't miss Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Upper reserve seats only $8. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com. Yankees are coming. The Yankees are coming. Yankees have the lead, of course, over the Red Sox by six games going into tonight's play. 
pitch will be taken down low. The Red Sox, Texas, and Tampa Bay battling for the wild card with the Red Sox on top by a game and a half over Texas and three and a half over Tampa Bay. The uh, Rays are losing to the Tigers 6 0 in the bottom of the fifth inning in Detroit, and Toronto has a one run lead over the Red Sox, and the Yankees are up 2 0 over the White Sox. I mean, Detroit got its own battle going as they're ahead of Chicago by four, four and a half over the Twins, so the wild card race. Mm. Pretty good. Yeah, Seattle, yeah. Chicago, Minnesota really out of it. Yeah, I think so. Seven and a half back with three clubs ahead of you. I think that's too many teams to leapfrog. One one delivery runner goes down to first foul. Interesting development across the internet today. There was a rumor out that Scott Casimir was being dealt to the Angels. The Angels in an effort to shore up their rotation, and it was really kind of curious because Tampa Bay is right there. But Casimir's been throwing very well. And I, I just thought it was curious that uh, this timing would be so unusual given the fact that they're in the wild card race. Would either indicate they were giving up on him or they had a big haul coming. Yeah. Mike Hankus, one two delivery, and that will miss outside and a two ball, two strike count. Casimir has a contract and it's a pretty hefty one, and he has been battling various injuries the last couple of years, and right now he's throwing as well as he has for a year or so, and maybe they're just thinking, you know what? We've got a chance to get out from under this contract, and the timing might be right. Runner goes, and that will be a stolen base. Rymel gets it. Eight no throw ten. made, ball bobbled. Yeah, Wyatt Torregas just never got a grip on the ball. A pretty good jump at first base, a little peek in at the catcher, and a good feet first slide gets himself into scoring position. Torregas never really got a grip on the baseball as he was trying to be quick. Out of the glove. The so Rymo, eight out of ten. Three two count Marquegas. Nick delivers to center a hard shot. Size more back. Runner tags. Rymo will go to third. There are two down. Nick hit the ball hard, but right at him. And again, we're not seeing anywhere near that ground ball consistently. See, we equated with Carmona two years ago. Yeah, when he was 19, when he was a 19 game winner, he was four to one ground balls to fly balls. And you can see he just doesn't have that same consistent sink. Melvin Moore has got a chance to give the Orioles the lead. Two down. Runner on at third base. Melvin flied to center hard first time up, takes the pitch for a strike. Melvin hitting 317 here at Camden Yards this year and 209 on the road. Big time differential. Oh one delivery to him. Came inside 0 and 2. Last night Melvin Moore had a big night. He homers to lead off the second inning. That was his fifth of the season. Then batting with two outs in the fourth singles to center field. Keep the inning alive and in the sixth inning again. A two out base hit. Three for three in his first three at bats. And the leadoff home run tied the game up in the second. Oh two count. Carmona trying to get out of the inning. Moore will take it down low. Disappointing power numbers for Melvin Moore this year, hitting a 258, five home runs and 34 RBIs. But in August, he hasn't been able to maintain the career pace. He's always been a great second half hitter. This hasn't been as productive as his past Augusts. We'll try and add to that production right here. One ball, two strike count. They give Melvin the left field line. The Porta moved over towards center. Fouls that one off. Count will stay at a ball and two strikes. Cleveland, one of those ball clubs that moves their people around a lot. I mean, all teams do, but Cleveland really takes great pride in the scouting reports, and Eric Wedge likes to get his outfielders and infielders juggled here. Well, you can see the binders behind the bench. They have the matchup numbers, they have the defensive spray charts, all kinds of books they bring. To the dugout with him once the 
game begins. One two shattered bat foul ball with a barrel halfway out to short. Count will stay the ball two strikes. Joe Skinner in the right there. The coach you see all opened. Looks like a library doesn't it? Yeah it sure does and there are different matchup books different defenses what they hit against their pitchers where they hit the ball and you can see that they have defensive alignments and all sorts of charts. Is this legal what we're doing? No. Oh, okay. No. Just check it. No. I love that chart on the left. You see the colorized yeah. cut, cut. That's the hitting zones. The red zone. Don't. Yeah. Don't, don't throw the ball the there. <laughs> One ball two strike out. Of course then you got to go out and do it. Melvin did he go. Third, he did. Bob Davidson says he went around on it. No runs, no hits, and a runner left on at second base. Ball game tied after three. with the location, but he finds himself in a tie ball game here. Three innings, two earned runs. He's allowed four hits. Walked about her and struck out three. But he pitched out of a bases loaded jam in the last inning when he got Luis Valbuena to pop up the left field to end the scoring threat. So 2-4-0 for, oh for each team. Birkin back to work. Laporta grounded out his first time up. Down to third. That'll be foul. Okay, you mentioned Matt Laporta out of Florida. He went to University of Florida and was a highly touted college hitter. He was a first baseman, third base kind of guy. They thought, well, he's a corner infielder. Now they're trying to figure out if he can play in the outfield. But they really believe he's going to be a power hitter. That is a strike on the outside corner. Laporta is truly one of those who came with great fanfare. Especially after he played in the Cape League. He had a big year at the Cape League one year. And uh, I mean, he was one of those guaranteed prospects, uh, going to hit the long ball, home run king, and all that kind of stuff. A lot of advanced publicity. Birkin gets the ground ball to short as Torres up. And the quarter is retired. One away, fourth inning. Orioles Masson have teamed up to make those tickets even more affordable. Fans can now purchase Masson maximum access tickets upper level only one dollar. Folks you heard that right. That is one one buck for any non prime home game September and October. Masson maximum access tickets first come first serve purchased online at www.orioles.com at least 24 hours in advance. Limited seating. So one dollar tickets Orioles.com. Go get them. Can't beat that. Now, good opportunity to come up and see this team in September and into October. And there's still the possibility and a little bit more talk about a six man rotation. Just to make sure that some of these younger pitchers pitching in September for the first time are healthy and stay healthy. Kranis, Dave Tremblay, and coaching staff contemplating the possibilities of that. And McPhail had talked about that while we interviewed him in Minnesota. The bullpen. 
recently has been very good. Cam Mikolaos setting the screen there has done a nice job since he has rejoined the club. Marte goes to center. PA coming. Two down. Some of the names likely to be here in September for the uh, Orioles. Probably Dave Trumbly said, I think we'll get three position players catcher, infielder, outfielder. Probably Joey Gathright, Jeff Florentino are likely to be the outfielders. Justin Turner is a second baseman. They've got Robbie Hammock and Guillermo Rodriguez, a couple of catchers. One of those will probably end up coming up here. And then there'll be the pitchers. And Amber is going to update us on that in a bit. Dave Trembley said you probably see two waves one on September 1 and then one on the 7th or 8th after the minor league season ends. Targus fouls that one back and a one ball one strike out. He fly it out to center field his first time up. Ball game tied each team with four hits each team with a couple of runs. Cleveland's won their last two. One one delivery on the way. Put that one upstairs as a souvenir and the counts one and two. I don't know if the game's being televised but if you get to MLB all access or whatever else might bring you the game. Giants are going to play the Rockies tonight. Wild card matchup. Ubaldo Jimenez is probably the hottest pitcher in the majors against Tim Lincecum in that one. Shortstop. Pearl Mate got him as Torres gets the out. One, two, three inning for Birkin and the ball games remains. Two, two. Plus, each game, the Orioles Radio Network's O's All Access pregame show is broadcast live from the bar with Tom Davis and Dave Johnson from one hour before the game right up to game time. Don't miss the bar's pregame specials and postgame fun. So, next time you're at Camden Yard, stop by the Bud Light Warehouse Bar on Utah Street. Gary? Friday night here at the ballpark and a good game 2 2 with the Indians. And a strike taken. Luke Scott had a single and scored. Weeders has an RBI double. This Torres an RBI single for the Orioles. Peralta's picked up an RBI base hit, and Marte has an RBI sack fly for the Indians. Scott will take the pitch away. One on one. Orioles have a tough finish with the probable six man rotation. Bigger bench players to get in. Scott takes that where they weren't playing. That's going to be a base hit. Laporta a long way to go. Scott into second base easily with a leadoff double. Uh, they're starting to come around a bit. It's been a long drop for him. 18th double of the season goes the opposite way. This is a changeup. You can see the grip in Carmona's hand. Good sink on it going away from Luke Scott, but he really stays on it and extends out over the plate. 
hits against the defense as they were expecting him in to pull the ball and he shoots one down the left field corner. Luke on at second with a two bagger and nobody out. Matt Wieters coming up. Wieters has delivered a double extended his hit streak to five games and picked up an RBI his 23rd. And Wieters down to first. That's a fair ball. He's got another RBI. Luke Scott will score. He'll stay at first with a single, and the Orioles lead at three to two. Well, that's a great approach by Matt Wieters. He was trying to advance Luke Scott to third base. Just rolls his wrist, hits the ball on the right side, and then gets a bonus when the ball bounces over Marte's glove. Marte had a beat on, took a wicked hop right over the top of his glove. Luke Scott comes in to score. So that team philosophy of move the runner over plates Luke Scott and gets Matt Wieters a second RBI. So Wieters has his fifth game, multiple RBI game with two, his 16th multi hit game, 14th in which he's had two hits. Now Ty Wigginton with a runner at first base. Orioles up. Three to two out hitting the Indians six four. Wigginton grounded out on a fine play by Peralta. We're talking about the Orioles schedule with the expanded bench more pitchers players to get in. It'd be even tougher with the remaining opponents 534 win percentage. Orioles have the toughest schedule in the majors to finish out the year. Uh, and that's life in the American League East. You're finishing up against your own division, and of course, any time you have to play the Yankees, the Red Sox, Tampa Bay, Toronto, all those teams are tough ball clubs. And then Dave Tremley has the, the added challenge of just trying to maintain the consistency and the focus of this team. But you can play a spoiler role. Got the Yankees coming in here, and you've got Texas coming over the weekend. Play the Red Sox. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to play a spoiler role and gain some pride in what you do. And measure yourself against teams that are going to the postseason. 3 0 delivery on the way. Wigginton is on. The second walk surrendered by Carmona. This one on four straight pitches. So the Orioles, three hitters up here in the fourth inning, and all have reached. Two on, nobody out. And it's Torres who got an RBI with a base hit. In the second inning, we'll stand in. It is a very humid night here. A little breeze has kicked up, blowing out to left. And out there on the mound, there's going to be some wiping of the brow going on. Well, you expect his tourists to bunt right here. The Indians are certainly in at the corners to guard against it. He shows bunt and will. Take the pitch down low for a ball. Indians will try and get a play at third base. Peralta at that 45 degree angle where he can watch the runner and the batter at the same time. And if the pitcher or catcher gets the bunt and they have a chance, he'll go to third. As Torres with three sacrifices on the year. Takes the pitch. It is in there for a strike. One on one. Now, a sinking fastball is a great pitch to bunt because it's going down. You want to bunt on the ground, obviously, and just hit the top half of that baseball and go right on the ground and move the runners. As Torres, 10 RBIs this month, highest monthly total since 2006 when he was with the Dodgers. Here, another roll. Good bunt. Play it first. And gets the out. Garagas putting the throw down, but is Torres getting the butt down? Uh, is he hit it right off the end of the bat? As Torres just kills it right off the end of the bat, right in front of home plate. The only play for the catcher is to go to first, and as Torres hustling down the line does his job, moves the runners up now two in scoring position. Gets congratulations from his skipper in the bench. And Brian Roberts will get the RBI chance. Brian 302 with runners in scoring position. He's got two. Leaders at third. Wigginton down at second base, one out. Pitch away for a ball. Brian has struck out and grounded out so far in the ball game. Orioles have a 3-2 lead on Weeders RBI single this inning. Leading Billy Butler in doubles. Nick Marcakis not far behind, tied with Pedroia starting the day.
Carmona with the 1 0. Roberts towards second base. That'll get a run in. Albano will play it over to first. RBI. Weeder scores. Orioles have a 4 2 lead. Uh, when you think about playing the game the right way, good things happen. After the leadoff double by Scott, Matt Weeder thinks about advancing him with a ground ball to the right side. It skips over the first baseman's glove into right field. Base hit RBI. Sacrifice bunt puts two guys in scoring position. Brian Roberts delivers a ground ball. Boy, when it works, it looks easy, doesn't it? 61 RBIs for Brian. Fundamental baseball. Here's Felix P.A. and he's going to get one into left field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Off the glove of Laporta. Run will score. Throw to second is not in time. P.A. goes in standing and holds the bag. Double in an RBI. Well, P.A. jumps on the first pitch he sees, picks up the RBI, and he's been swinging a hot bat about one with the tag. And Laporta in the outfield. You see the first pitch swing, ball tailing away from him. He stays on it with Wigginton at third base. He's going to knock him in. Laporta's dive just gets a piece of it trying to smother it, pops to his feet, makes a strong throw to the bag. And for some reason, Felix didn't slide. If he slides, it's no contest. And you can see he stands up and almost comes off the bag. Look at his momentum. He still has contact. There's the umpires. They know you can keep your foot on the base. <laughs> Can't call that time out till you stop moving. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, has come out to talk to Carmona, talking about how hot Felix P.A. is. P.A. has picked up a, a one for three in this ball game. P.A. is now 15 for his last 42. Up around the 350 mark. He's got three doubles, a triple, three home runs. He has scored nine runs and has eight RBIs in the last 14 games. Two down. Reimold. Nolan has walked and grounded out. Orioles with three runs in. Scott Wheaters and Wigginton, the first three all got on and all have scored. RBIs to Weeders, Roberts, and PA. Here's the 0 1. Two strike count to Rimold. Good change up there, and Nolan is way out in front. We haven't seen too many off speed pitches from Carmoni. He's relied heavily on that sinking fastball, and it has been sinking. PA on second base, two strike delivery. Rimold will take it up high. And a ball and two strikes. Fenway Park tonight, Toronto got a 3 0 lead. The Red Sox tied it at 3 3. Toronto got a 5 3 lead. The Red Sox have tied it 5 5 in the fifth. Back and forth battle. 1 2 delivery on the way, and Rimold will take it inside for a ball, 2 and 2. David Ortiz is red hot. For the Red Sox, he's hitting 333 over the last 12 games. He's had seven home runs and 16 RBIs in a dozen games. 2 2 delivery on the way. That's outside. And a three ball, two strike count on Rimo. Now, Ortiz had one home run June 1st. And he's got 22 now. He's really come on strong second half of the season. Still hitting just 230. But he's going to put up 90 RBIs. Amazing RBI output for that kind of average. 3 2 count to away. And jammed him. Did he go? Yes, he did. Bob Davidson, the call. The Orioles, though, will come away with three runs. They get it done on three hits, leaving a base runner on, and the O's are now up 5 2.
next trip at southwest.com. And by Corona and Corona Light, official sponsors of the timeout. Relax responsibly. Beautiful night on the Inner Harbor. Well, mostly a beautiful night. <laughs> Orioles have the 5 2 lead. <laughs> That's a better picture. We go to the top half of the inning and a strike taken. Leading off the fifth, Grady Sizemore. He has grounded out and been hit by a pitch. Lowest average against any team. Only Toronto, a lower average. 214 against the Orioles. He did have a three for five in the ball game last night. Yeah, he's one of the real consistent hitters in this lineup, but you can see he's got trouble with Toronto, Boston, and the Orioles. America McGee's giving him fits. 0 2 delivery. Buck and I were just looking on the Red Sox game. Josh Beckett started that ball game. Beckett's been tagged for three outings in a row. He gave up two home runs tonight. Beckett has given up 10 home runs in the last three games. I mean, that's just unheard of. Yeah, Aaron Hill hit his 31st, and Rob Barajas hit his 31st. Go. Got him on the inside corner. Birkin's rocking along right now. That's his fourth strikeout. And he's retired five straight Indians hitters after he got out of the base loaded jam in the third and another comebacker. That two seam fastball, we talked about a new wrinkle that he is really starting to utilize. Very effective to left handed hitters when you start it inside off the plate and it catches that inside corner. One down, that'll bring up Cabrera. Back at a, or rather, a Birkin had only retired 62% of leadoff batters in an inning. That will get you in real trouble. But he has allowed only one on in this ball game tonight. Villa Bueno in the second, and it was one of the innings where Cleveland got a run. As Drogo Cabrera will take the pitch on the outside corner, one on one. Cabrera watches that one float away outside with it, two and one. Cabrera and Chu both among the top 10 and averages on the road. Cabrera is a 324 hitter, seventh best in the league in road games. Mora, no run. Looked like he was working its way back toward the field, but now they leaned up against the rail there and ball was a couple of rows deep. Well, Cabrera, he talk about it. We talked about him choking up on the bat. You can see he's up the bat handle about three inches. And he's still got enough bat control, and he doesn't need that big, powerful swing from the bottom of the bat handle that a lot of the big hitters, of course, even some of them wrap that little finger off the end of the bat and just hold it in the palm of that bottom hand. 2 2 delivery to him inside. And a three ball, two strike count. Cabrera. To be followed by Chu against Birkin, who has walked one, and that was intentional, has hit a batter and struck out four. He's got the middle of the order here. Three ball, two strike delivery. And uh, I guess that went off the bat. Yeah, foul tip. He just yep. checked his swing, and it went right down into. Matt Waiters and the thing that made it look unusual is Matt didn't move and just like he reached up and asked for a new ball. Matt Waiters has an efficiency of movement behind the plate at all times. Is it, he it, does he not wait around around you. Yeah, he didn't move around at all. Nope. And that is down low. So that'll be a walk. Cabrera's on with one away. On Sunday, don't miss American Classics Day at the ballpark presented by the Maryland Lottery. All fans at the game against the Indians, 135, can enjoy $1 hot dogs, $1 sodas. For tickets, call the Orioles, 888-848-BIRD, Orioles.com. Don't forget, bring your four non-winning American Classic Lottery tickets to the Oriole box office to receive a free ticket to the game while supplies last. Chu puts it up in the air, Mora. Again, running on a run. Chiu out of South Korea. 
now living uh, in Buckeye Arizona. Well, that's where home is now. And a 309 average last year playing in 94 games for the Indians. He'd been up and down with the Indians over the last three seasons. Shinsu Chu 0 1 count. Runner at first base. Bowen two. Good swing. Chu went to a baseball academy in South Korea, and it was truly a place where they played three days, three games a day. And the parents would bring lunch for them, and then they'd play another game, and then they'd bring dinner for them, and then they'd go home at the end of the night game. But it was all about baseball and a little bit of school. Mm. Not well, unlike the Royals Academy that yeah. started in the early 70s. Ewing Kaufman, the plain owner of the Kansas City Royals, had the idea that if you took non-baseball players, put them in an academy atmosphere, and just taught them the fundamentals of baseball, you could develop some true players. 0 2 delivery on the way. I think where Kaufman's philosophy broke down had he taken his drafted players and put them in there for a year and given that same immersion type of training they would have really been ahead of the game. Ron Washington Frank White two of the most prominent graduates of the Royals Baseball Academy. Runner not going inside. Baseball like most sports but baseball may be more than others although it's not fair basketball and baseball repetition. Yeah. Those two sports in particular repetition repetition in order to be better. Football less so I think. And hockey hockey you just have to have certain skills and the repetition with it but. Baseball you've got to repeat. Here's the 2 2. Chew will follow back. Yeah, and Terry Crowley has always used the benchmark of 1,500 at bats before you have a real good idea about what kind of player you have. And that's a, a good example and supports the fact that the more reps you have, the better off you're going to be, and you'll have a chance to succeed. Runner at first base, one away. Orioles have a 5 2 lead. Chew laces that one to left. He's got a base hit. Good at bat. He fought off some good Birkin pitches right there. So the Indians have runners off at, on at first and second base with only one away. And they get their cleanup batter Johnny Peralta to the plate. Now Chu a very disciplined hitter and he has a very good at bat gets that pitch up just goes the other way and you can see how well balanced he is. He just extends through the ball out to left field and picks up his first hit. He had chased a high fastball in his first at bat and struck out. Rick Kranitz heads out to the mound. I think what Kranitz is talking about is the pitch selection and how he has to be a little more aggressive down in the zone. Obviously with a power hitter like Johnny Peralta what you want to do is get a ground ball here. One thing that Birkin did in his last game he's yet to do here is get a double play yet two in his last outing on Sunday against the White Sox. So Peralta will stand in with the single RBI coming in the first inning. He is one for two. And takes the pitch outside for a ball. Infield at double play depth for the Orioles. Cabrera on its second base. Chu with good speed on it first. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Peralta with a big cut and fouls it back. Peralta's liked hitting in this ballpark. He's got a 316 batting average here at Camden Yards with a couple of home runs in his career. Doesn't get a lot of chances here. These two teams don't play each other a lot. First time they've met on the year. This series. Here's the 1 1 delivery down to third, and it is a foul ball. Peralta back with a one ball, two strike count. Now Peralta we'd mentioned that he has made the positional switch from shortstop to third base. He was reluctant to do it early in his career, but now with the emergence of Escubo Cabrera, a true shortstop, it's a little easier for him to make the transition. And Johnny Peralta's a big guy. He's six one, weighs two ten, and certainly looks more like a third baseman than a shortstop. Taken down low for a ball, two ball, two strike count. That waiter's blocking that one, keeping that runner at second base. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job, and that gives the pitcher a lot of confidence that he can truly commit to a pitch if he bounces it. Weeders is going to corral it, knock it down, keep it in front of him. 
Merkin last three starts five and two thirds five and two thirds and five innings. Peralta will pop that one up outside of first base Luke Scott coming over and again no run. Special uh, day here at the warehouse today as there was a luncheon to honor the entrance to the Orioles Hall of Fame Harold Baines and Julie Wagner long time worker in the front office who had a lot to do with community relations the Herb Armstrong Award winner for work of non uniform personnel for the O's and the ceremonies prior to the game tomorrow night for both. A great luncheon today swung on a miss Merkin gets his fifth strikeout and a big one. And he elevates the ball pretty effectively here but again trying to go down and he missed all the way out of the strike zone up Peralta chased a bad pitch. Got away with one there. That'll leave it up to Travis half there and again a chance for Birkin to get out of this Birkin worked through a bases loaded situation in the third when the first two got on base and did not allow a run. Now he's got two on here with two down. And Hafter will take the pitch away. Travis Hafter with a big bat. Have to be careful of the long ball when Hafter is up there. One oh delivery on the way, and that is in there for a strike. It was great to see Frank Cashin at the luncheon today. Frank and GM role, longtime uh, Oriole fan, writer in uh, his early days around baseball. And uh, Frank was at the luncheon today. It was just great to see him. 1 1 delivery. And I'm sure he's listening to the ball game tonight with Gene down on the shore. Yeah, it was a good luncheon. A lot of former Hall of Famers have come back, and uh, certainly some Dick Hall there, B.J. Serhoff was in attendance, and then, uh, you know Harold Baines uh, was very emotional. He talked yeah. about his family an awful lot and how important they are to him. And he's a man of few words, and he got up there and said, "Well, here's the shortest speech you're going to hear," and he lived up to his words. But it was great to have the great Roland Heeman in town to introduce yep. Harold Baines. They had spent so many years together in Chicago. Hank Peters was on hand. That's yeah, pretty good GM. Oh, Andy McPhail was noting they were his uh, idols in that role. And that'll be a pie for a ball. And Hafter is on. So the Indians have loaded him up here in the fifth inning with two down. Birkin has two strikeouts in the inning on Sizemore and Peralta. But a couple of walks and a single by Chu have loaded the bases. Only three walks. And the two that are unintentional have come in this inning. Cabrera, Chu, and Hafner around the horn on the bases. Belbueno is doubled and flied out. And will take the pitch away for a ball. A big chance for the Indians. Down by three. Get right back in this ball game. Del Bueno one for five with the bases loaded, a double. One and one. Clay Meredith, side armor, begins to throw down in the Orioles bullpen. Birkin. Here's the one one delivery. Gets ahead on the count. Elbuena behind on the count. One ball, two strikes. And Birkin will try and work that magic one more time with the bases loaded. Got out of it the first time. Two delivery time. That ball to right field, right at Marquez. He's got it. Well, Bueno is retired. No runs, a hit, no errors. Bases are left loaded. Orioles lead it.
Google Cabrera. Matt Wieters goes opposite field, hits the double to try it up for one all. And then Wieters again with a runner at second base, pulls the ball on the ground and bounces it past Andy Barté to drive home Luke Scott. Right behind him, Felix P.A. has an RBI double, part of a three-run fourth inning. And then Jason Berker with the bases loaded gets Luis Valbuena to line out to Nick Marquez a second time tonight. And Berker's being able to pitch out of a bases loaded jam. And it's not that much fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> 5-2 score here as we play the bottom of the fifth inning. Merkin five innings, just two earned runs and struck out five. Matt Wieters had a big night at the plate, a double single, two RBIs, as has Luke Scott. And Nick Marquegas will lead it off against Carmona, who's walked two and struck out four. Marquegas has a single, a run scored, and he has flied out to center field. Second of the four-game set against the Indians. Swag out a miss. Good pitch by Carmona. Chris Tillman goes against Jeremy Sowers. Ball game tomorrow night. Brian Mattis and Justin Masterson will make the start on Sunday. 705 first pitch tomorrow, 135 Sunday. Way inside to Mark Akis. Do run to remind you that uh, tomorrow's game will be seen on WJZ in the Baltimore area and Mass and two in the DC area for tomorrow. One ball, two strike delivery. Mark Akis towards the middle. Not down. Bell Bueno up. And not in time. Fine effort by the second baseman. But an infield hit for Mark Higgins. Well, Nick out of the box as he always does. Got a great break. He pulled the ball to the right side. That gives him a running start and a good effort by Val Buena, who popped to his feet quickly, but the throw not in time to get Mark Higgins. Hitting from the left side, he's got his momentum going toward the bag, coming out of the box, and that allows him to beat the throw on a fine defensive play by Val Buena. And the Orioles now have their eighth hit. Marquegas getting the better of the second baseman on that one, but a fine effort. Bob Wayne couldn't have done any more. Here's Melvin Mora. He has struck out, flied out, four for 14, lifetime off Carmona. Pitch stays out in front. Marquegas blocked it. Carmona's had to work with runners on base every inning except the first when he retired the side in order. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Melvin Moore, chopper to third. Peralta, one. Atlanta, two. Well, ground, bar, ground balls have been infrequent for the Indians as Carmona normally throws a ton of ground balls. Not been the case for him this year, but that was a timely ground ball as he got Moore to hit into the 5 4 3 double play. Luke Scott with a multi hit ball game. Already a double and a single, and he has scored uh, two runs in the game. Luke playing at first base. Gets his 19th multi hit game of the season. Oh, one count, two down. Very uh, strung out defense here. They've got the big shift on in the infield. They give Scott left center field in the outfield. Look at that big hole. So they play him to pull all the way around. Except the left fielder. The Porta stays about where he would be for any normal at bat. Yeah, just kind of straight away in left field. A big room on the ground. And then you see Luis Rivera, the First base coach who checks on the infield defense, makes sure everybody is where he wants them. That'll be taken down low for a ball, and the count will go to three balls and one strike. Saw Luis Rivera over there, former ball player. Uh, Played from 82 to 98 in pro ball. 
I've always thought Luis Rivera someday should be a major league manager. He's just a really knowledgeable baseball person. Very strong in dealing with people. Really. Real managerial candidate, I think, over there. Three ball, two strike count. Rivera. And a genuine nice guy to go along with. <laughs> On top of everything else. Yeah. But he really loves the game and he knows it. He's one of those people you look to if you're a manager to get some help. Three ball, two strike count. Luke Scott with the bases empty and two down. Carmona's pitch to him again, fought off. Quite a battle. Luke's had a good night at the plate and wants to build upon it. Single and double, he scored two runs. Bottom four guys in this lineup have really been productive tonight. Look at Cesar Sturis with an RBI base hit and a sacrifice bunt. Scott and Weeders both with two hits apiece. They've scored three runs, and Ty Leonard has a walk and a run scored. Again, 3 2. Put it back. Luke Scott able to get the walk, and that will bring Weeders up. It's time to bring you up to speed with the ATT Rapid Rewind. Second inning, Matt Waiters goes opposite field and drives in a big run as that would be the first run of the ball game for the Orioles. I made a 2 1 game. And then in the fourth inning, hitting with Luke Scott at second base, gets a base hit to right field. Two for two for Waiters with three RBI, two RBI. ATT, the nation's fastest 3G network, ATT, a world delivered. Now Waiters will take it inside for a ball. Well, Matt looking for a three hit ball game here. Leaders on the season has had a three hit game and a four hit game, one each. 1 0 delivery to him and that hit him. Carmona inside the first time didn't get him, inside the second time did. Carl Willis on the phone to the bullpen, the pitching coach, and this one trying to come inside. He just clips Weeders in the back. The fifth hit batter by Carmona on the year. Runners on at first and second base. Orioles with a two out opportunity. Here's Ty Wigginton grounded out and walked. And will take the fastball up high. Well, the Orioles will try and take advantage of a couple of freebies after the double play, the walk, and the hit banner. They've got to give the bullpen a little time. Carl Willis heading up. Right hander Jensen Lewis begins to throw. This bullpen has really kind of come together pretty effectively here in the second half. Gary Wood came on and got a save last night. Chris Perez, who they acquired in the Mark DeRosa deal, along with just Todd, they have both been throwing the ball okay. And Perez has really been hot. So they've got plenty of options down that bullpen. Willis delivers his message and returns to the dugout. Orioles have done a good job against Carmona. Who had that tough start, got sent down, came back up, and we showed you earlier since returning for the minors, a 279 ERA and five starts. At least five innings in all five of those starts. Ty Wigginson will foul that off. And a one ball, one strike count. Usually after a pitching coach or manager has gone to the mound to talk to the pitcher, if you're hitting, you pretty much sit on a fastball. It's probably going to be a strike. Yeah, because that message is, you know, let's get aggressive again. And you say, okay, well, you're going to throw me a fastball. And Wigginton we'll was all over. One ball, one strike delivery. So as a manager, you never went out to the mound and, and said, don't throw a strike, all right? Yeah. Did yeah, you ever no. say that? No, that no you work. never did that. No. no. Listen, uh, I want you to get behind this guy and <laughs> see if you can work out of it. <laughs> I have had some interesting visits out there. Yes. You might imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Think of one you can tell. Oh, I will. I'm thinking about it right now. Because you have to go to through tell. a lot of them to get to that one. <laughs> <laughs> two down. Here's the one two delivery. Wiggins and a shot at the middle for a base hit. Scott the turn. Here's the throw by Sizemore. Cut off. And the Orioles have a 6 2 lead on a Wigginton base hit. 
Well, now everybody in the last four hitters have contributed. A base hit and an RBI for Wigginton, and they've had a heck of a night. Scott, Wieters, Wigginton, and Historis all contributing to this effort. Wigginton gets a nice pitch away, and Sizemore's throw just barely gets to the cutoff man. Nowhere close to getting Luke Scott. I believe that is the fourth RBI the Orioles have picked up tonight with two down. And Eric Wedge has come up, and so will Carmona. The Cleveland starter chased the Orioles' lead at 6 to 2. Form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. A 6 to 2 lead, Carmona out, 25 year old right hander, Cincinnati native, Jensen Lewis. Carmona couldn't get out of the fifth, nine hits, and the lefties really did the damage. Center field size more as Torres going after the first pitch will be retired, but the Orioles will add a run here in the fifth inning and extend that lead out of 6 2. with bases loaded and then again in the fifth inning Bob went at the plate chance to cut into that lead and he gets the line drive to right so his night has come to an end after five inning. a little bit of a struggle but he was able to strand seven base runners two earned runs five hits allowed he walked three and struck out five.
So he'll turn things over to Clay Meredith coming out of the bullpen. Meredith making his 16th appearance for the Orioles. Meredith out of Richmond, Virginia. 26 year old right hander for the Orioles. Bottom third of the order. And the strike taken on the inside corner, Matt Laporta. You take a look at Nolan Rymo between innings stretching, and when he goes out, clearly limping as he heads out to left field. He's going to watch this one go over his head. Goodbye, home run. Matt Laporta. Delivers the long ball off Meredith and makes it a 6-3 ball game. Third homer in 22 games. Yeah, Matt Laporte has got some pop. That's what we heard when they drafted him. Milwaukee drafted him number one out of the University of Florida. He was a powerful college hitter. This ball is off the plate inside, and he clears the front side and just drops the barrel on it and drives it into the seats about 10 rows back and left. So Laporta picks one up and gets one of those runs back in a hurry. That'll be fouled off. Marte up at the plate. Play Meredith greeted with a long ball. And that one was well back. Second home run he's given up since joining the Orioles. And uh, on the season, only the third home run surrendered by Clay Meredith. Marte's got a sacrifice fly to center and a fly ball out to center. A two ball one strike count on the 271 hitter for the Indians. Laporta who got that home run spent majority of the time at Triple A this year and he had 17 home runs and 60 RBIs and 93 games played there. And he was among the International League leaders in a number of offensive categories ninth in homers. Down to third, that'll be a foul ball. Arte holding it two and two. Yeah, and uh, Laporta, as we mentioned, was acquired from the Brewers in the CC Sabathia trade last year at the July trade deadline. And they just want to find out what they have here. In the United States of New York, which talked about him when they called him up to AAA. So we're going to find out if he can play left field, see if he is worthy of a spot in the everyday lineup. Wedge getting a look at a number of these Columbus players. That is taken inside. Marte is another one who spent time down there. So Meredith, first two are on against him. He gets the walk. Take a look at our Ford trivia question on this Friday night. Last night, shortstop Nick Green pitched two innings for Boston. Who is the only Oriole non pitcher to work two innings in a game? Larry Barlow. Larry Barlow. Why does that Larry name? Barlow? Why does that name stand out? Someone did it in Toronto, I believe. Early on at Exhibition Stadium. Maybe. Well. See if you uh, got it. Nick Green last night. Elrod. Elrod. Elrod two and a third in Toronto. I remember there was a game in Toronto when you know, they got deep into players pitching. Elrod Hendricks went from behind the plate to the plate. Two and a third innings for the Orioles in a pitching performance. Nick Green did a good job. No hits, two no innings. Yeah. <laughs> the shortstop. 1 0 delivery. Some managers will not do that, would you? Oh, yeah. If the situation was right, they were down 8 0, 9 0 early in the game, and uh, they were a little thin, and they had a big series coming up. They just didn't want to overtax their bullpen. And yeah, you do it different times just to you lose the battle but win the war. Rick Kranitz is out there as Meredith struggling here coming out of the bullpen the left hander Mark Hendrickson now throwing for the Orioles Meredith worked on the 24th four days ago against Minnesota worked an inning in the third had a couple of walks in the game he pitched three scoreless innings though on the road trip covering a three game period coming over from the Padres for Oscar Salazar and he's been a, an iron horse for the Orioles. 2 0 count. Ground ball towards short as Torres looking at trouble. Roberts barehanded and a fine pick by Scott at first base. 
Yeah, these two have really worked well together at the bag at second base. Earlier, Asturias grabbed the ball out of the air with his bare hand. Now it's Roberts, and you can see a little bit of a bobble and a hesitation, and that threw the timing off. So that's why Roberts had to go barehanded. Watch the bobble, pins it against his chest, but still flips it in time to Bryant, and then there's the dig out by Luke Scott. But these two, Asturias and Roberts up the middle, have been great, and they got picked up that time by Luke Scott. Big, big double play ball for Meredith. Hit hard to second. Brian Roberts, Brady Sizemore, retired. One run, one hit. No errors. Nobody left on. Laporta's home run for the Indians has made it 6 3. has been traded to the Twins from the Diamondbacks. Also, Jose Reyes may need surgery to repair his hamstring. And Niger Morgan has been placed on the 15-day disabled list with a broken left hand. So a tough break there uh, for the Nats. Also, I want to mention Brad Bergeson. He, uh, as far as September call-ups, he was expected to be caught up September 1st, but we know he will not be. We found out today he has not yet thrown off of a mound down in Sarasota. He is still nursing that bruised shin bone. Uh, we do expect to see him before the end of the season, so the Orioles are going to have to go to plan B as far as expanding to a six-man rotation. We could see somebody like Chris Waters or also Chris Lambert called up in order to give some of these young rookie pitchers a spell. They don't want to have them pitch a lot of innings in September, Gary. Okay, Amber. Uh, I really had hoped, uh, obviously, that Bergeson was going to be ready when the call-ups start on the first. As Amber says, not to be. There will be others looked at. Brian Roberts working against Lewis and the pitch is in there for his strike. Pitching wise uh, Dennis Arfate his rehab stint after the circulation problem should allow him to be up. Koji Uahar is waiting to come up. They want to use him out of the bullpen though. Swag on a miss by Roberts. Matt Alberts who just went down is available. Chris Waters is available. Yeah, what you don't want to do is you don't want to burn a roster spot by adding somebody to the roster just to promote them for September, and they'll probably hold off on Jake Garrietta because of that. He's not yet on the 40 man roster. Off days in September, kind of interesting. Foul tipped, held on to. Oriole fans, when it comes to tickets, you deserve Major League Service. Go to Stop Hub, official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Orioles. Well, you'll see it tomorrow, 7 o'clock, that's on Madison 2 and WJZ. Then the day game on Sunday wraps up the four game series. Then the Yankees come to town for three straight, all on Madison HD, all starting at 7 p.m. One down, here's PA, a double RBI, one for three in the ball game. And regarding the uh, Action that's going to be coming up tomorrow. Game's going to be on WJZ in Baltimore. It will be on Masson 2 in the D.C. area. 
And the pitch is taken inside. So WJZ for the O's tomorrow. Everywhere else on Masson 2. And looking ahead to that Yankees series, the Yankees are going to feature Andy Pettit, A.J. Burnett, and C.C. Sabathia coming in for that three game set. They'll be countered by Guthrie, Hernandez, and Birkin. So you see the A team here in their rotation. Two big free agents, Burnett and C.C. Sabathia. Burnett has won a game in August. Yep. Fortunes change in a hurry. 2 1 delivery on the way to it, and he rips it way back. And goodbye, home run. And I think he made Utah straight on that one. Felix PA with a long home run. He absolutely crushed this ball. Never a doubt that it was deep enough to go out of the ballpark again. Really, it may have gone out of the ballpark. A fastball about belt high, and all he's in doubt is whether or not it's fair or foul. Boy, hit that a long way. Just missed getting over that outer fence onto Utah Street. Bounced off the iron fencing. What a shot. Felix PA's sixth home run. And the Orioles get that run right back and have a seven to three lead in the ball game. PA now with a two for three night and two home runs. So he's having quite the series against Cleveland already. That's where he put it out there. <laughs> That's a long way and way up in the air. That was almost as high as the foul pole three quarters of the way out. Pitch is taken inside and a two ball one strike count on Nolan Reimold it struck out grounded out and drawn a walk in the game. Orioles now with 10 hits a sweeping pitch outside. A P.A. homered in the Minnesota series finale. He had a two out home run in that game against Nick Blackburn. And Ian and Stewart's talking about that big swing. He's really swinging a bad walk. Four for nine in this series, followed by a walk. As Reimold is on with a free pass, first walk surrendered by Lewis. All of the youth sports teams, coaches, and players, don't forget, you can get your team signed up for Youth Sports Day, Sunday, September 20. Red Sox will be here. Your football, lacrosse, basketball, baseball, any sports team can take part in the pregame parade around the yard. Group prices apply. Call the Orioles, 888-848-BIRD, to go to Orioles.com. Nick Marikakis, runner on at first base and one away. And we'll take it for a strike. Nick has had a couple of singles, two for three in the ball game. 305 average now with the 15 home runs and 85 RBIs. Nick works one down the line. That's going to be a foul ball. Nick uh, coming into the game had only one hit in 14 at bats off Carmona, the Cleveland starter. But he got a couple off him in this game. Carmona out of there giving up the six runs nine hits over four and two thirds innings. Three walks and four strikeouts in the game. Before giving way to Lewis. Comes inside with that one and two. Jensen Lewis started with Cleveland. Sent down to Triple A at the end of June. Recalled August 1st. He's had a 2-2-5 ERA since the recall. 1-2 delivery on the way. Arcagas will take it up high in a 2-2 count. Now Lewis came up part of that 2007 pennant stretch drive, and he really pitched well for them down the stretch. Worked out of the bullpen and proved to be very effective. Actually got some action in the postseason. Appeared in seven games for them in the postseason. 2 2 delivery. That'll be looped in the air to left field. Laporta. Two down. Melvin Moore coming up. Orioles 
Seven runs on 10 hits in the ball game. Now they've had at least eight hits in 16 straight home games. The O's record in that department is 20 consecutive games with eight or more hits here at Camden Yards. Well, the bats stay alive. Orioles coming into the game. Ranked fourth in average, tenth in runs. And pretty good balance in the order when you look at it. Start of this ball game, everybody was hitting 259 or higher. And they had good balance, nice combination of switch hitters now with two in a regular lineup every day. Melvin Morris had an 0 for 3 in the ball game. His Cleveland bullpen has struggled, 13th in ERA. They've given up the second most home runs by any bullpen. Orioles taking advantage of it here in this inning on the home run by PA and trying to do more. Mora will take the slider away. 1 0 count. Melvin with two down. And Reimold on at first base. Long look in. Bear in mind the Orioles are getting this, these offensive numbers tonight against a staff which since the All Star break has had the second best ERA in the league. The Indians 3 9 7 since the All Star break. 1 0 delivery. Mora will take the pitch up high and a 2 0 count. Yeah, it's been a real challenging time for the manager Eric Wedge and the coaching staff. He trade away. Mark DeRosa early on, then Cliff Lee, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, and finally your leader and catcher, Victor Martinez. So they've done a heck of a job of keeping everybody's spirits up and making sure nobody packs it in too early. 2 0 delivery on a check swing. Home plate umpire says he won around. Cleveland struggled from the very beginning and made a decision they weren't going to be in contention, and that's what. Resulted precipitated the deals. Mark DeRosa, Ryan Garco, along with Lee and Martinez, and now young players. And Eric White says, Look, we're a lot like the Orioles in that regard, looking at what we got. Looking ahead, they picked up a lot of players. They did a lot of numbers for the deals that they made, including, I think they said, got like seven pitchers, I think, out of all that. Seven young pitchers. So yeah, two of them in the bullpen, and Chris Perez and Jess Todd, they came in the St. Louis deal. 3 1 delivery runner goes a chopper off the mask. And the count goes to 3 and 2. Reimold will come back to first. And still noticeably limping. Yeah, I mean, he's feeling that Achilles problem. Bark at him a little bit. And still something he's had to deal with for over a year. Just kind of a chronic problem. They're trying to investigate whether or not they can address it in the offseason. Maybe surgery to repair it. It's just kind of a fraying thing that creates a lot of. Irritation and pain. They have to make sure they ice it quite a bit. Again, Rimo running foul ball. I think down the line it is. Thirteen thousand nine hundred sixty-one. The announced attendance on this Friday night for the Orioles and the Indians. Right back at it tomorrow night. Hope you'll get out to the yard. See the O's. Chris Tillman one and two. Jeremy Sowers five and nine. 705 first pitch. Ball game tonight was delayed a little under an hour by rain at the start. And that's away. So Melvin Moore is on. Runners on at first and second now with two down. Tomorrow's starting pitchers left handed Jeremy Sowers making his 17th start of the season will go up against Chris Tillman and Tillman coming off a very good start tough luck loser in Minneapolis two to one ball game and Tillman is very upbeat about some of the adjustments some of the tinkering they've done lately last time out in the side session what they did was they just tried to work on his alignment see if he can't be more consistent with his curveball especially Luke Scott with two down. Scott already an integral part of the game double single walk and has scored all three times. Luke's got two on here. Oh one count.
Took a little off that, and he will take the pitch, and it's away. Luke hitting 280 with runners in scoring position on the year. A little better than the 267 overall average that he has put up. 14 of his 20 home runs have been hit here at Camden Yards this year. Lewis, the 1 1 delivery to him. Fastball that will miss up high, 2 and 1. Detroit has beaten Tampa Bay 6 to 2 in their ball game, bettering the Tigers' chance at a division title and lessening Tampa Bay's chance, maybe, at that wild card spot. Two one delivery on the way. Scott will drive that one back. And a two ball, two strike count. In that Tiger game, Rick Porcello was the winner. The rookie pitcher we were talking about. He's 11 and 8 now on the season. Matt Garza took the loss for Tampa Bay. Tigers were concerned. And Porcello had tired arm about three weeks ago. So they certainly hope he is over that. They rested him through, let him go through one rotation extra. Inside to Scott, and it's full. Three balls, two strikes, and two down. So Reimold at second, and Mora at first will be running. Orioles have the 7 to 3 lead. Eric Wedge hoping his bullpen can keep this game where it's at. Lewis is 3 2. Base is loaded. Which Scott's been on base four times tonight. He scored three runs, has two walks, single, a double, and three runs scored. Carl Willis got to get something going down in that bullpen. Matt Readers has had a big night. He too has been on base three times tonight, all three times. He's had a double, a single, scored a run, driven into, and got hit by a pitch. Orioles load him up again. Reimold had a walk. He's a third. Mora a walk. He's on at second base. Luke Scott a walk. He's on at first. Those are killers. Club trailing and Lewis has walked three in the inning. All coming after the home run by Felix P.A. which may have jolted him a little bit. Jess Todd in the bullpen. Yeah, Jess Todd pitched in last night's game. We're just two thirds of an inning. Actually got a big out in the sixth with a runner at second base. Got Ty Wiggins at the line out to center and then gave up a lead off home run to Matt Wieters. A base hit to Robert Andino and then after he struck out Cesar Asturias, he was lifted in favor of Rafael Perez. Orioles have taken advantage tonight, five for 12, with runners in scoring position. Bases loaded, Wieters. Double single hit by a pitch. Already has two RBIs in the ball game. This Cleveland team came in tied with Detroit for the most walks issued. They have issued six in this game tonight. 1 0 count. Wieners, he's going to get a base hit into the corner, yes. Chase down by Chu. One run is scored. Second run scores. Weeders gets caught in a run down. There's a runner still at third base. Luke Scott. Tag put on. The other run won't score. It'll be a two RBI single for Weeders. A four RBI ball game for him. And then he gets caught on the big turn. PA started this inning out with a home run. His six. Weeders adds to it with the RBIs. And it is a 9-3 lead.
Street, presented by First Fidelity Mortgage. Team up with Nick and Adam Jones, Saturday, October 3. $21, you get the Utah Street bleacher seat, an exclusive I Live at 2110 Utah Street t-shirt. The next two dates, this Sunday and September 5. They'll both be sold out. Don't wait. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com. Orioles up 9-3. Meredith out, a run in an inning on one hit and one walk. Hendrickson on. Mark Hendrickson has been very effective working out of the bullpen. He had a couple of big innings in Minnesota on Tuesday. He came in and worked a clean inning. Got a double play first batter he faced Joe Mauer, and then he got Dustin, Justin Moore no to get out of that inning. They gave way to Chris Ray. That came in that tough 7-6 loss on Tuesday. Middle game of that three-game set. Cleveland batting in the seventh inning. And the other top of the order. Pitch will be taken for a strike. Cabrera double in the first and scored single in the third and walked in the fifth inning. And a one ball one strike count. Cabrera turns around here against the left hander the switch hitter. Batting 306 right handed and will take the pitch up high. Two ball one strike count Orioles trying to even up. The first two games of this four game set. Orioles have fallen two games under 500 here at home. Ball to PA in center if he can get there. Way back he can and he's got it. <laughs> Hendrickson records the out one away. Shinsu Chu a single in three times to the plate. Four hits now in seven at bats in the first two games of this series. Anderson will get the call strike. That's good first pitch curveball. Just that get me over curveball that few hitters are going to swing at. Looking fastball early in the count. They're going to take anything unless it's something that's very hittable. And they will oftentimes let that first pitch curveball go. Chu got a half cut on that one and fouled it away. Hendrickson gets a quick jump in the count as it goes to 0 2. Four and a third scoreless innings, last seven games for Hendrickson. 0 2 delivery, fastball up high. Marks had the marked improvement after going to the bullpen. 6-3-5 ERA in the starts that he made, seven of them. Bullpen has been a much better fit. That one a bloop shot. PA falls down. Gets back up. Felix PA never got a step taken. He started to move and the ground came out from under him. Yeah, and there is a lot of rain here all yeah. afternoon. And he may have hurt himself. Yeah, it looked like he kind of spun his wheels and fell to his knees before he ever really got going. There you see him he had slipped literally before he ever got underway. He's trying to get his footing. And Chu holds up big aggressive turn, but PA got the ball back in quickly. There's new grass out there right where he tripped, which is the spot where most center fielders play. You, you can see a colored differentiation. Swung out and missed. And that's right where he was. See that on the left? Right there? over there. Right yeah. there. And he went down. He was just to the left of that left field side of that patch. He just lost his footing. And we mentioned it has been raining here most of the day. And the pitch is taken by Peralta. So it goes as a base hit. Chu is on with his second hit. Peralta's one for three with an RBI and two strikeouts in the game. Seven hits now for the Indians. Peralta got jammed, popped it up, second base. Brian Roberts puts that away. Two down. 
So Peralta's got a one for four. That'll bring up Travis Hafter. Nine, eleven, and zero for the Orioles. Three, seven, and zero for the Indians. Both have left seven on base in the ball game. And Jason Birkin got out of two bases loaded jams. One in the third, one in the fifth. That's the difference in this ball game. Hafner's been walked a couple of times, once intentionally. Struck out in the only official at bat that he's had in the game. Hafner is three for eight lifetime off Mark Hendrickson. 0 1 delivery to him. Take it inside for a ball. Chew on at first base. Scott playing behind him. With the Orioles up here 9 3, not going to give Hafner the benefit of that gap between first and second. Hafner takes the breaking ball and just missed with that one in a two ball, one strike count. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way. And that's going to miss outside. So the count goes to 3 and 1 on Hafner. Hendrickson working very carefully to the power hitter. Hafner's hitting 242 off lefties, 40 points higher off right handers. Four of his 13 home runs against lefties. 3 1 delivery. Hafner will take it and missed. So the Indians have a couple on here in the seventh inning with two down. Hendrickson's first walk. Oriole pitchers have issued five, one of those intentional. Weeders goes out to talk with Hendrickson. Just to make sure they're on the same page with the base runner at second base, first time with Hendrickson in this game, has been a runner at second. Just to protect the signs. Valbuena stands in. Luis Valbuena, two on and two outs. It's a big out here. And that is in there for a strike to him. Now, that first pitch breaking ball has been a good pitch for Mark Hendrickson in this inning. Got ahead of Chu with it. 0 oh, 1 delivery on the way. Valbuena is going to get up the middle. Brian Roberts, the play to his Torres, and a nice out recorded. No runs, one hit, no errors. And a couple left on base. Tonight's seventh inning stretch brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly. Back and the bats getting it done here in this game, and as you said, Mike Birkin with a couple of big innings. Yeah, Birkin got out of two bases loaded jam, one in the third, one in the fifth. But it's been the hitters, especially the bottom four in the lineup, all contributing. Luke Scott and Matt Waiters have had terrific nights, and Waiters has driven in four runs tonight. Luke scored three runs, so they have really done damage. Bottom part of this order tonight. And uh, for Waiters, the left side of the plate at this point, at least, certainly looks like that's the strength of his bat. Well, it's going to be naturally because he gets more at bat. There. They're more 
four right-handed pitchers in the league, but I think he is a very accomplished right-handed hitter as well, and I just think we're going to see him grow from this point forward. It's really important, as we mentioned, that these young players in the Orioles lineup right now start winning some of these games and build some momentum to take into the offseason. And for Luke Scott, the opportunity with Aubrey Huff gone to play at first base now, get out of the DH role as, as successful as he was with that. He wants to be an everyday player and would love to be able to find a spot where he can get at least some games in. Yeah, Gary, I think there's a lot of questions to answer before you go into the offseason thinking about next year and where you have position players covered, where you might have to fill in the offseason. First and third right now, really up in the air as far as what they're going to do. Outfield looks to be in pretty good shape. The bullpen's coming together very nicely. And then you think, well, maybe if we go out and get a front-line pitcher, somebody to get experience into this rotation, you could have the start of a pretty good starting rotation. And we've mentioned uh, the Orioles next year will have uh, some millions of dollars available because of contracts that are gone, old contracts like Jay Gibbons are going to be up no longer have to be paid. So somewhere around that $20 million mark, which gives them a chance to go out and look at a free agent. Yeah, and there's a couple of things that come into play. You can have all the money you want, but if there's no real free agents out there, you might just hold on to those bucks and just patch it together this next year and hope that the free agent market after the 10 season is much better. Jess Todd, whom we were talking about, has come out of the bullpen and will face Ty Wigginton. Wigginton will go after the first pitch and foul it off. Ty's had a good ball game, a walk and scored, and an RBI base hit. Lewis came on and worked uh, an inning and a third out of the bullpen for the Indians. And he had some tough luck as he got charged with three runs, including the home run by PA and a couple of hits. And he had three walks, which cost him. So the third pitcher to be seen by the Orioles tonight from the Indians. Ty Wigginton, eight home runs and 34 on the ice. And he's going to get another base hit into left field. Laporta's going to chase it down. Wigginton is on. That is a leadoff single in the bottom of the seventh inning for the O's in his second hit. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates tonight. Luke Scott, who has had the big night four times up, four times on, and three times scored. PA has had a long home run and a double, couple RBIs. And Matt Wieters, he's had a three hit night and a four RBI evening. Text in your vote, 518 62. Cesar is Torres. As Torres helped in the fourth inning with a sacrifice to help in a what would be a three run inning. He is one for two officially with an RBI base hit. The bottom four in this lineup have now contributed eight of the 12 hits to this attack tonight. 1 0 delivery to him. He got jammed on that right field. Chu. One down. The Yankees came back with a dramatic 10th inning win. Robbie Cannell hit a free run home run with two outs to win it 5 2. And Cano has had a wonderful season, really coming up with clutch hits and playing very well in the field. The Yankees dropped two out of three against Texas and rebound with that victory tonight. And you do have to give the Yankee organization, Girardi, and the players credit. They had a season that at one point looked like it might fall apart early. A Rod going through all that he went through, and they were struggling with some veteran pitchers, wondering whether they were going to succeed. Right now, they're playing some great baseball and have for the last three months. Yeah, and CC Sabathia was the starter. Went seven strong innings and struck out ten tonight. Mm. Ends up with a no decision. Brian Bruni picks up the win in relief. But you're right, and, and you know having to share there playing defense has allowed Cano to concentrate more up the middle. Because Teixeira has such great range to his right. Cannell has played very well in the field. 2 0 delivery on the way. Ryan Roberts watches it. It is up high. Ryan's looking for his first hit. He's got an 0 for 4 in the ballgame. He does have an RBI. Roberts had an 0 for 1 in the ballgame last night. And that is going to be in there for a strike. Todd with a runner on at first base. One out, 3 1 count. 
Marte playing off the bag and in while holding the runner. Here's the 3 1 delivery. Brian Roberts takes it. First baseman, Andy Marte, what he's trying to do is give himself a chance on a ground ball to not be caught behind the runner. So he plays off the bag so he can move over with a left handed hitter up, cover the hole better, and not go behind him. Could make it a little tougher, obviously, if the ball's hit hard. 3 2 delivery on the way. Roberts takes it, and it's called strike three. So after a 3 0 count, three consecutive strikes. Third strikeout tonight for Brian Roberts, and Todd came all the way back. Brian had a pretty good look at it. Might just have caught the outside corner. He didn't think it did, but Tim Sheeta rings him up. Now they're going to play the first baseman Marte behind the runner. Not even going to hold here. Roberts a three strikeout night. Two down. Felix Pierre and he's got another base hit. Rips that one into the gap. Ty Wiggins and he's going to be waved home and Pierre's hurt. Well. P.A. came in really upset about the fact he fell down in the outfield stayed in the ball game and on that single obviously is going to be coming out of the game and grabbed the back of his left leg as if to suggest he's got a hamstring problem comes out of the box and then it grabs him about halfway up the first baseline but you've got to believe this problem started when he slipped in the outfield. And here's where he flips slips watch him in the outfit. You can see he started to go after a fly ball off the bat of Chew. Lost his footing. And was visibly upset after that inning. And you can see they're going to make a change here. Richie Ben so they trembly out. And what a night for Felix B.A. comes with a very disappointing ending. Three hit ball game, three RBIs, a long home run. Orioles already without Adam Jones, who's got the bad back. PA was getting some playing time because of that. Now PA is out of there. Robert Andino will come on to run. Well, this time of the year, everybody's a little beaten up, and your rosters get a little thin right before the first of September. We see Rimel limping around. Now PA has to leave with some sort of leg injury. Ten runs on 13 hits for the Orioles. Make it 14 hits. Nolan Rimel's got a single. That's his first hit of the ball game. He's been on three times though with two walks. Three hits in the inning. Runners at first and second with two down. Todd. Having a tough time finding the outs here. Yeah, and I'm afraid he's going to have to take one for the club. Get to this point, you're only in the second game of a four game series. I'm sure Eric White doesn't want to go any deeper in his bullpen. Nick Marikegas, he'll put one down the line. That is going to be a foul ball. Jesse Todd, as Buck mentioned, coming over from the Cardinals on July 26. He'd been a Triple A Memphis most of the season. He had 24 saves, the closer for their ball club. Four and two, 24 saves, 2.2 ERA at Triple A. The 0-1 delivery to Marquegas. Well, we mentioned last night Nick Green pitched two innings for the Red Sox as the Red Sox knew they were going to have a tough series with Toronto. So they didn't want to abuse their bullpen having had them pitch an awful lot. So Nick Green pitched two innings and when you're in a four game series and you already go deep into your bullpen you want to make sure that you don't blow everybody out. You just can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Jeremy Sowers goes against Chris Tillman and then Justin Masterson. Starts for the Indians against Brian Mattis. So Carl Willis and Eric Wedge trying to figure out how they get through the rest of this game without going much deeper. Been there, done that. It's yeah. no fun. One, two, delivery, and Nick Marquez launches one. Goodbye, home run. Good for three RBIs.
Nick Marquez gets the breaking ball and just kind of spun out over the middle of the plate, and he gets all the way through it. Great extension, high follow through onto the flag court. Second home run of the night for the Orioles, and they're putting one on the Indians right now. 16 home runs. 88 RBIs for Nick Marquez, who came in sixth in runs batted in, 75th of his career in the homer department. And boy, he got that one. So the Orioles here in the seventh inning have added four. They now lead it 13 to three on a 15 hit attack. Here is Melvin Mora, and he will take it for a strike. These are the kinds of nights that opposing teams have talked about when talking about the Orioles. These kinds of offensive outpourings. A lot of clubs, other clubs worried that this is the face of things to come more consistently in future seasons, coupled with the hope that the young pitchers of the Orioles will be able to hold down the opponents. Nora up the middle, ground ball handled, Todd. That's the out, but not before the Orioles add four. Nick Marquez picking up three of those with this is 16th home run of the year. Brian Roberts with a nice piece of glove work. The barehanded grab by Stewart's not in time for the double play. But look at the effort here. And this is later on in the inning as they were able to turn another one. They really teamed up very well up the middle. Brian Roberts and Caesar Estoris. Robert Andina who came on to pinch run for Felix P.A. who had to leave with an apparent leg injury. But Caesar Estoris and Brian Roberts have Put on a defensive show here again tonight. That one hit hard to left field. Rymo coming, diving, and makes the catch. Tip of the cap to Nolan Rymold in left field. Matt Laporta denied a base hit. Well, Rymold is extends out, dives for the ball, and this what turf slides to a stop. A nice running catch to take away extra bases from Matt Laporta. Full out extension, great concentration, and he's been limping around on that sore Achilles tendon all night long. What an effort. Nolan Reimold, Mr. Understated. Just another fine play in left field. One down. Marte, sack fly, a walk, and is flying out. Maybe his last chance to extend his eight game hit streak. Mark Hendrickson getting some help defensively working here in the eighth. The 0 1 delivery. That will miss and a one ball, one strike count. Birkin with a chance to get his fourth win as the Orioles' 25 year old right hander went five. 
Couple of runs, five hits over five innings, three walks, five strikeouts. Birkin in his first outing against the Indians in his career. Got a pretty good chance of getting a victory and going four and 11. One two delivery and that is taken inside two ball two strike count. Yeah this is all about late season momentum now for the Orioles. You want to win games and you want to carry some real positive outings into the postseason. So Jason Birkin continues to take steps in the right direction. Two ball two strike count. On Marte. Hendrickson the 2 2. And Marte will follow another one back. 12 for 29 during the eight game hit streak for him. 14 batting average. Came up on July 28 from Triple A Columbus. 2 2 delivery. Seems so strange to talk about. Columbus as a triple A yeah. team for the Indians, doesn't it? After all those Yankees, years, yeah. they were the Yankee Clippers. Marte, 3 2 pitch. And that will be a base hit into left field. So Marte has got a nine game hit streak with that single. Orioles and Oriole Wives have teamed up with the Maryland SPCA to create a very special souvenir for O's fans. You can pick up your copy of the 2010 Orioles Pet Calendar. Enjoy 16 months of your favorite Oriole players, their pets, some lovable dogs and cats from the SPCA, and proceeds benefit the Maryland program. Their work with local homeless pets. Get your Orioles Pet Calendar at Orioles.com today. Can tell a lot about people by the company they keep. Substitute dogs in there if you'd like. Torregas up doing the catching. Batting ninth. He is 0 for 3 in the ball game. 1 0 delivery to him. And we'll take that for a strike. Another one of the young players. The Indians are taking a look at just his 10th game. Under 30 at bats. Yeah, Torregas played at Virginia Tech, played three years for the Hokies. We're taking a look at him here at the end of the season after trading Victor Martinez away. They're trying to figure out their approach behind the plate for next year. Torregas is 26 years old, 262 minor league hitter. Out of Fairfax, Virginia, now lives in Ashburn, Virginia. 2 1 delivery on the way. Breaking ball. That will miss, and the count goes to three balls and one strike. South Lakes, Virginia High School. 3 1 count with one away. Runner at first base. And that's going to be a base hit into left. Prime hold up with it. And runners are on at first and second base with one away. With a 13 3 lead here, Mark Henderson isn't trying to fool anybody. He's trying to just get the outs with batted balls here. They have to be a little better on the spot. It's nine hits on the board for the Indians, but they are down by 10. Grady Sizemore, the leadoff batter. Leadoff home run yesterday's game has the most career leadoff home runs for the club now in their franchise history. 21. Kenny Lofton held that mark at 18 until Sizemore went by. Oh one count runners off first and second base. Breaking ball is in there for a strike 0 and 2. Now that curveball has been good for Hendrickson tonight. It's really been a neutralizing weapon for him against the lefties. Brady Sizemore just 213 off left handers this year.
Cincinnati beat the Dodgers. Speaking of spoilers, they got a 4 2 win against the Dodgers in their ball game. All of a sudden, the Dodgers may be in a little trouble there trying to hang on to that Western Division lead. Colorado, which has won seven out of their last ten, only three and a half behind, pending the outcome of their game tonight against the Giants. Ground ball, Roberts, that one ate him up, still gets one relay to first, not in time. They get the force out at second base. Marte goes over to third, two down. Yeah, that ball kind of hopped up on Brian Robertson. Just handcuffed him a bit. The top spin on it, that second hop, and you can see he's got enough time to get the lead runner at second base. Right that, and that's the double up Sizemore. Been a busy night for the middle infielders. First and third. There are two down. Cabrera. Double single walk and a fly ball out. He has scored a run in the ball game. At the short, is Torres to Roberts, and they get the force out. No runs, couple of hits, no errors. Two are left on base. Bottom of the eighth coming, Orioles up. One eight six two results on those extra post game show. Scott Wheaters and Wigginton are going to get a shot at it here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And the Indians are going to go to the bullpen one more time as Tony Sip will come on. Well, Tanner, Tony Sipp has been back and forth between AAA and the big leagues three different times this year, and he has come back. June 23rd, his last time in since that recall. He's pitched fairly well, made 22 appearances. He's only allowed a single run in his last 11 appearances. Chris Jimenez will go into right field as Chu comes out. We'll go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Luke chant goes up. Looks had the perfect night at the plate with the double single, two RBIs, a run scored. And, and he's drawn two walks. And I'm sorry, not RBIs. Three runs scored. Four times up and four times on. Left hander sip with the 0 1 delivery. And the fastball is going to be in there for a strike. There's Adam Jones, who's got the bad back coming out onto the bench, maybe just in case. Orioles are out of center fielders. Andino's playing center. Twenty 
36 year old left hander. Brings it down and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Yeah, Michelio in the bullpen for the O's. Hendrickson a couple of solid innings, no runs, three hits, and a walk. 26 year old left hander out of Pasagoula, Mississippi. On the mound, the 1 2 delivery and wave that. Scott is retired. Tony Sip, we mentioned how well he's throwing and he gets the first batter he's faced here in the eighth inning and pretty good breaking ball. You can see a very tight spin and it's difficult to pick up the rotation on him. Scott chases a pitch in the dirt. One down. No, oh, Matt Weeders already a three hit night. The other time hit by a pitch. Two singles, the double, four RBIs for Weeders in the game. If Matt can add to it. Hitting 273 now, 26 runs batted in. In the air to right field. Jimenez is under that one and he's got it. Two down here in the eighth inning. So Matt Wieters with the four hit ball game. Or a three hit ball game and that's the second time he's had a three hit game this year. Ty Wigandon. Couple of singles in his last two at bats. He's walked and grounded out. He too has an RBI in the game. Everybody in the lineup has contributed tonight, either scoring, driving one in, or picking up a base hit. Wigginton will take the fastball for a strike. Yeah, that's a good feeling for Buckle to come back and have such a good offensive night. Ty Wigginton down in the batting order scored a couple of times driven in a run. He's got two hits in three official trips. 0 2 count on Wigginton is hitting at 264. Ty against the lefties 243 he's been better against right handers. 0 2 delivery and that's just going to miss. Tony Sip attended junior college for a couple of years in Mississippi and then moved on to Clemson. Had a 280 average at Clemson. Worked as a relief pitcher. 1 2 delivery, and that's going to just miss inside. He too played in the Cape Cod League. The league, Summer League in Alaska, and the Summer League in Cape Cod are generally regarded as the two best summer leagues in pro baseball. Here's the 2 2 delivery breaking ball hit in the air to left field hard Laporta. He's got it. A 1 2 3 inning Orioles need three more out Steven up the series at 1 1.
better than fast food. With Bob Martinez and Amber Theo Harris and our great crew here at Camden Yards, I'm Gary Thorne. Some of the 13,900 plus on hand, seeing the Orioles with a 13 to 3 lead. Brian Roberts has come out of the ball game, and Ty Wigginton, who was the DH, will now move to second. So the Orioles will surrender their DH with a big lead here in the ninth inning, and Cam Michalayo will come on to do the pitching. Yeah, Michalayo working in his ninth game, tough luck loser in a 7 6 loss up in Minneapolis as the middle game of that three game series, his first. Major League loss. He's really thrown the ball well. Cross fire delivery. Good velocity. Late movement on his fastball. Pretty good slider as well. Chris Jimenez will take the pitch for a ball. This will be his first at bat in the ball game. University of Nevada, Reno, college player out of Gilroy, California. And the pitch is taken outside for a ball. For a school that's not really perceived to be a baseball school, the University of Nevada Reno produces a lot of big leaguers. 2 0 delivery. Popped that one up first base. Scott. No play. Nevada had a. Bunch of guys put on the same team, including Lyle Overbay and Chad Qualls and Corky Miller, Joe Inglet, Andy Dominic, catcher, played in the Boston system for a while. But uh, you know, you don't really think of Reno as being a baseball hotbed, but the coach up there has done a heck of a job. A lot of those schools, that's what they do. They look for uh, an opportunity to make their mark, gain publicity, have a good sports program, and one. Area or other by attracting players who come out of community colleges, two year programs, or right out of high school who are really looking for the baseball exposure. Chris Dickerson, Kevin Kuzminoff, quite a few different guys that have played. Ryan Church, currently of the Braves, all coming out of University of Nevada. Chris Jimenez fouls that one back on the count at Three balls and two strikes on him. Nikolayo trying to finish this ball game up. Jimenez at Columbus at 235, Triple A. 24 games as a catcher. Sometime in left field, sometime at first base. Playing in Columbus. Three ball, two strike count. Made his major league debut this year. And that'll be foul back and stays at three and two. He's had 97 at bats at the major league level with the Indians. Orioles putting big innings together. Indians had a 2 0 lead going to the bottom of the second when the Orioles tied it up. That ball to center field, and Dino have to play that one on a couple of hops. That's right. That's Robert Andino in center field. Just the second time in his big league career he's played in center field. He played actually six innings for the Florida Marlins coming on as a defensive replacement. So been out there before, not a stranger, but he had to go out there after Felix Pia, the starter, injured his leg. It wasn't apparent until Pia got up, ran the bases, and had to give in to that leg injury. Here is Peralta just after he'd moved over that way and Dino gives chase won't get it. It'll be a ground rule double. So Peralta's got his second hit a two for five ball game. And the Indians get two on here in the ninth inning with nobody out. And Dino of course is checking in before each hitter steps in with the dugout to see where he's supposed to be. And he'd just gone about three steps over there, and the ball was hit even further in that direction. Yeah, he really had no chance to make a play on it. That ball was hit on the warning track in right center, and now he's wandering around trying to get in position. And you see, he just got a late signal from the bench. John Shelby goes, Nope, a little more to the left side. Kelly Shabik will come on and be the pinch hitter for Travis Hafner. Mm -hmm. 
And he'll take the ball to right field. Nick Marquegas, long way to go. Diving and makes an outstanding catch. A run will score. Jimenez tags up on the sack fly. But a big out recorded Nick Marquegas. All right, sure was. No telling what happens in this inning if this ball falls. But great concentration. We've seen Rymold and Marquegas make outstanding diving catches here late in this ball game. Pretty good commitment. Big lead. Easy to just kind of take things for granted, but he didn't allow that ball to fall. Saves a hit for Cam Nicolaio. RBI. Shopping. Peralta stays at second. One down. And a strike taken. Luis Felbueno. He doubled and scored in the second inning. Peralta with an RBI. Shopping now is driven in one. Laporta had his third home run in the sixth inning, a solo shot, and Marte with an RBI sack fly, the four runs for the Indians. One ball, one strike delivery. In the air, center field, Andino, you can't hide in this game. Robert Andino's got it. Three balls in the inning, hit the center for Andino, showing up in center for the First time with the O's, and as Buck said, the second time in his career. Yeah, and that's something. He just comes in and just say, oh, well, maybe you just go out there and stand for a couple of innings, but he has to make some plays early on. You could stand in foul territory outside a third, and the ball would still find you if you were coming in in an emergency replacement. In an unusual position. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Two down. Orioles one out away from the win, leading at 13 to 4. Laporta. That home run came in the sixth. One for four. Runner at second base, two down. Ryan Robertson, RBI. PA, three RBIs. Marquegas, a three RBI homer. Weeders, first four RBI game. That's going to be a base hit. Nolan Reimold up with it. Runner will stay at third. Laporte has got his second hit. Peralta goes to third base. First and third, two down. Now, this is the first time we've seen Nicolaio hit around a little bit, and obviously Barry Trumbly just looking on, trying to come up with this final out. The outcome of this game was long ago determined. Andy Marte is. RBI came in the second inning in a sack fly. 0 2 delivery. Uh, two out delivery. Was taken for a strike on one. Before Roberts went out, he and his tourists combined on eight plays of one kind or another in this ballgame. Busy night. We don't know if Brian Roberts came out with a problem or not. Post game show looks like he's all right. Yeah, I, mean, I just think because you were where you were in the game in the DH, Torres going to factor in. You made that move. Is Torres going to make a good play here to end it? He does. This one's in the book for the O's. A 13 to 4 win. As Birkin picks up the victory over Carmona, the Indian starter. And in this four-game set, first two have been split.